Hey everyone, today is Thursday, the 17th of September 2020. This is The Gap, episode 534. I'm Luke Laurie. Joe Gorey's here. We've had a busy, busy morning. It's all happening. Uh, yep. <laughs> uh, yeah. Been up since six. Yeah. Got fucking shit face last night. Mm. So... It's classic pod- podcasting move, that one. Yep. Uh, I'm in Struggle Town, I'll tell you what. Um, but yeah, it's been a busy morning. What's going on? Uh, we finally know what a fucking... Got some console details. We know yeah. when it's coming out. Yep. Uh, we know how much it costs. We do. Both of them. It uh, feels real yeah. now. It, it does. Uh, it's fucking two months away. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> do you want to kick off with that stuff again this week? Let's do it. Um... All right, so PlayStation announced a uh, showcase, um, which they put on this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, sure. They uh, will we'll go with the pricing details and all that sort of stuff first, right? I guess. So we, yeah. we obviously know there's two SKUs. There's the PlayStation 5 and there is the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition. Um, we have a release date of November 12th, which is for US, Canada, Japan, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, and South Korea. Um, That will be two days after the release of the Xbox Series consoles. Yeah. Um, And then on November 19th is the rest of the world. Uh, So about a week later um, for the release date. So basically the same week (laughs) as the Xbox. Um, Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah. I don't think they've they've never sort of been that close to each other, which is. No. Um, I wonder if the dates were similar. Like, uh, like at what stage did they change the dates, or was this always in their mind? Like, we're going on this day. Um, I I still think there's. I I reckon they were listening to this podcast, right? And, <laughs> and I was like, uh, yeah, October twenty eighth. I reckon is 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 when it's going to happen. Yeah, and they're like, we're going to change it just to fuck with Joe, and that's what to happened. make Luke right once again. Just yeah, make Luke correct again. Make it. The price is right spot on. This- um, so they went four ninety nine and uh, US, and then three ninety nine the US, which is kind of they they could have went anywhere, right? They could have went. We're going to have a premium console. It's going to be yep. more expensive, but. You get the games. We've always done that. You, we know that you come for the games, right? Or they yep. could have went. We're gonna, we're gonna battle against PlayStation, um, Xbox, and they're gonna have no chance. Which is kind of, well, not no chance, but that's kind of what they're going for. They're going the same price as the yep. Series X, and then mm-hmm. the, the the three mark. So they're going to three ninety nine for the um, discless version. Because if you kind of do the fifty bucks off in the US, it really doesn't make much sense. Because then it's 450 and 499 so you want that three number in there to sort of yeah. make it sound a bit better i think that's what we we're yep. kind of saying last week and yep. um and also because it's got that blu-ray player and that is a bit expensive like they usually go for about 100 and 150 us um yeah in australia it's going for what is it 750 for the standard yep. edition and then is it 549 or 550 for the regular is that the pricing we're getting uh is it is it that? Hang on. It's um. Had it all it. has sort of just come out in the last um couple hours or so. Like five ninety nine. Five ninety nine. Okay. Yeah. Which um. Yeah, I think that seems like it's a good price. Uh I yeah. Like. I mean, flat out. Do not screw yourself over by getting a discless. In my opinion. Uh, do not make that mistake. Yeah, I think you it's like, as Australian as an Australian, you wouldn't buy it. I don't think you would buy it. Uh, no, like, it, like no matter where you are, in my opinion, do not get. The I, I think because I was talking about this in our chat, it works different here in the US. Like digital pricing, at least, is yeah. very weird in Australia, where the recommended retail pricing of games is um, it's dropped a little bit. It's now a hundred dollars or ninety nine. It was like 110 a few years back. Um, but you can go into a retail store and pick up a game for 
what, $60? Um, and if you're paying something a little bit higher, maybe 70 at the most. Uh, yeah. But if you go to like an EB Games, that's where yeah. you're paying the $100, like the, the recommended retail price. In um, in the US though, the pricing works a lot different. It's The digital pricing is basically the same as me going to Best Buy or Target or Walmart. Like there's no fluctuation there. It's really, I mean, the only discount you're kind of getting is if that store has like a, a sale on or something and they're trying to get rid of stock. Um, yeah. So the parity there is very different to back home where it's a huge margin but, on those but you like you do still you still get like a, a lot out of a disc based version of a game sure. right provided like you actually get a fucking disc like to trade in or yeah you can sell it on fucking gumtree or ebay or whatever the fuck ever people sell shit these days uh at, or you can lend it to a friend or like all that kind of stuff uh and you like yeah you can't do that if you're discless like which is I mean, sorry, you could give your friend login details for your PlayStation account, but yeah, you probably sh- shouldn't. Sure. <laughs> um, but at, which, which is kind of surprising to me, is why the, I mean, they could have went. We, we know they're they're getting they're making losses off these consoles, right? There was a story um, yep. this week that I read that Microsoft is taking they they admitted they're taking a loss on their console, and I can PlayStation will be doing exactly the same thing, and I'm surprised that Sony didn't go even lower for the discless version. Could you imagine if they were just like, fuck it, we'll just, we'll go the same price as the Xbox Series S. Like that would have just destroyed them. If that had happened, hmm. I would, I, th- I, th- I would struggle. <laughs> I would, I would struggle to hold the same position that I do about the discless. <laughs> yeah. If it was that much cheaper, it would like you'd you'd have to fucking give it some serious thought, but uh, yeah. Because you think about where, like, where people purchase those games, mm. and they're all being purchased through the PlayStation Store, right? And so yeah. Sony is getting that thirty percent cut that we lo- cut that we like to talk about. Did you that, say cut? <laughs> no, I didn't, but you did. A uh, thirty percent cut that <laughs> I really that did. um the like publishers get right and so that's no longer going to the your your video game retailers or Retailer, whatever. Yeah. like it's going yeah. directly into sony's pocket so they could have eaten even more of a cost and just yeah. been like we'll bury we'll bury xbox into the ground because we, we're getting the money anyway like you, in order to play if, games on this thing you need to give us the money directly i wonder if retailers you know pushed back push back yeah uh i don't know if you need a reason like i don't know if but, you need a retailer anymore necessarily you yeah what's to stop can... sony sending them out i feel like that's where the majority of them are going to come through in the us at least because they're talking about it's something we spoke about a couple of weeks ago but this like raffle ticket system like a, a lottery yep. system still yep. don't know what the deal with that is because i've seen yeah. retailers over here started pre-ordering stuff i don't know that's because they've been given an allocation and they're starting to just put random stuff on but I think within the next like 24 hours, we'll have a good idea, good idea of where a lot of this stock is going to go and how it's going to be distributed. But yeah, yeah, like you said, I think there's no reason for Sony to be like, we'll, we'll ship it to you. Um, I think that becomes yeah. a weird thing of like then logistically, how much do they handle like shipping and like are you then paying another $60 on top of shipping or something? And when are you going to get that thing? Like it's the, the way... Um, Australian uh, the post postal system works is very different to here as well. Like I can order something on Amazon and <laughs> get it within hours. Um, right. Or, or same with Best Buy. Like they can just I can click it on Best Buy and someone will drop it to my door in a couple hours. But in Australia, it, it can kind of we don't have you don't have that infrastructure set up yet, and so sort of like a little bit. It is getting there, but yeah, yeah. it's not as like hectic as I mean. That. I think it's more difficult. In Australia, because yeah. of population density, but I, I live in Sydney metro. I think if you're is. in any metro area, you can get that sort of thing a lot of the time. Yeah, uh, um, and they do the click and collect a lot now as well, where you can just kind of buy it online and then go into the store. Like, hey, it's ready to be picked up. Um, mm. Yeah. Anyway, I, good pricing. Like they're being very competitive. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a good 
consoles. Like the, they talked about some games. Anything else you want to say about the pricing before we move on? No, man. Um, I, you know, I said it last week. Uh, my opinion was that uh, if PlayStation comes out with lower or the same price as Xbox, yeah, they trouble. win the the opening salvo in this war. They win the opening, <laughs> the first lap. They take pole position. Yeah, they won't. Like it doesn't mean they win the race. They don't win the like. It's not an overall victory, but it is a yeah. It's pole position. It puts them in a really good spot. Yeah, because uh, you, you think uh, about it as well. The the pricing of the two consoles, the Xbox is more powerful, right? So even if they're on par with them, you, you'd mm. think that PlayStation is maybe making less of a loss. Yeah, yeah, like. It, dep- it, it depends pretty heavily on like elements of like of the insides, mm. uh, but that like SSD you know, and that sort of stuff. Xbox still has like it is still well poised, right? This is this is a three one uh, series lead for the PlayStation, but uh, as we've seen, uh, that doesn't mean you can't blow a three one lead. Um, and fresh reference, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there's still plenty of time for PlayStations to clip this one. Um, clip of this one. Uh, the yeah, the Game Pass stuff is so huge. The amount of chatter, I mean, even on our Discord, trying to explain to people the uh, yeah. value add that mm. Game Pass provides, even to people without an Xbox, is like. Yeah, it is totally worth it because people are like absolutely saving money and getting access to some fucking top notch games yeah. uh, at a like greatly reduced price. And if fucking games retail is going to fucking leap to one hundred and twenty five dollars RRP or one twenty nine RRP, <clears throat> right? Then, uh, like honestly, I think yeah. The, those sorts of services are more important than ever. Hmm. So yeah, it's definitely, you know, Xbox isn't out of this race by right. any means. Uh, they can still, yeah, the price, like yeah, like I said, like I said last week, yeah, PlayStation coming out with a price that's identical puts them in a really good spot. But yeah, it's not over by any means. It's right. cool. It's uh, it's good that it's like I think it's a reasonable price. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I mean, I've already smacked down money, my money it. for a yeah. pre-order. Yeah, uh, so yeah. I mean, they they also beat Xbox to the pre-order, right? As well, by the looks yeah, of it, which is fucking crazy, right? That is bananas. Yeah, uh, but yeah. Um, and so yeah, the the pricing of the uh, actual games themselves has is going up by the looks of it. They're saying um, pricing between 49 US and 69, which is translated to about 100 to 125 Australian. Um, And so just for comparison, recommend retail price in Australia, as I said before, it was about 110, sort of dropped down this generation a little bit, or even the last generation to about 99. And that's what you'll pay in your, like when you go to EB. but they're jacking that up, right? To they're saying 120 ish, somewhere around the 120 mark for recommended retail price. That doesn't necessarily mean you'll be able to go into um, like a, a Harvey Norman or a JB Hi Fi in Australia and, and have to pay $120 for a game. It's probably going to be more like 90 or $85 to 100, somewhere around that price. So games are definitely going to go up. I don't think they're going to be. Like if you can go out and, and look for for games, it's something you talked about um, last week, and you know the amount of many times we've talked about this. Like for the people that want to go out and look for bargains, they'll be able to do that. They'll go mm. find the games that are still, you know, thirty forty dollars cheaper than what the recommended retail pricing is in Australia, at least. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, I just just saw on Twitter that apparently PlayStation Five console pre-orders have sold out in Australia. Yeah, yeah, it's nuts uh, for EB. Uh, major retails. Yeah, yeah, but none as. Hmm. 
But um, no nanas. But no no nanas. Anyway, so, this yeah. is all sort of happening as we <laughs> as we podcast. Like I'm I'm reading stuff right now that says uh Jeff Grubb is saying that uh GameStop has been caught off guard and they don't, they don't know what's going on. Like people are walking into stores and things and trying to pre-order stuff and they don't know what's happening. Um ah. Gold. So we'll see. Um games. You want to talk about some games that they showed? Yep. Let's do it. Uh Spider Man looks rad. Miles Morales. Uh he's yep. the best Spider Man. Everyone knows it. Uh, hmm. um Hey, no, before we, oh, yeah, no, keep, we'll keep on this track. Uh, I just I, I just remembered uh, yeah. things that you were right about. Okay. I just remembered about things that you were correct about. All right, so um, Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Um, oh, you're trying to, trying to change no, the I, subject. You, you, is this about that or you, just, you said keep going? We'll talk about that. This is completely separate. Okay. But, uh, but I gotta, I'm going to go down it anyway. Hey, can you watch Tenet on streaming? Uh Yeah. Can you? Yeah, it's out. Where? Where? Uh, Amazon Prime, um, Vudu, all these places. Vudu, Amazon Prime, Vudu. Yeah. Yep. You reckon? You reckon? Yeah. Uh, so, over do you movies. have to go buy Skittles, or do you already have Skittles? I don't think they sell them over here. Mate, you might have to ship them. I also uh, said by the end of September. So. No, you didn't. No, you I'm fucking sure. Didn't. I'll, I'll roll the tape. You absolutely I'm fucking good at these didn't. Go roll and take. Said, you said the fucking. You said two weeks after it comes out in cinemas. Two weeks is what you said, and you tried to change it, and you failed. It hasn't been out for two weeks. It has been out for two weeks. Not here. It hasn't. How long has it been out for? A week and a half. Lies. Yeah. Do you two know how weeks. Much, how much money that that thing made this weekend? Not Early a lot. <laughs> <laughs> not, like not as much six as million dollars. <laughs> Yikes! Well, that doesn't even cost us to cover the cost of crashing a plane into a building. But uh... but, but to give you an idea, um, they're saying that seventy percent of cinemas are open at the moment. Guess right. what? Nobody's going. Yeah, <laughs> there's Yikes. a good reason for that. Uh, how about you release your films? On streaming services where people can watch them, like um, September three is when it came out, released in cinemas in America. It is yeah. September seventeen. Sixteen is... over here. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So you've got twenty four hours, and I, if I were you, I would go find the fucking Skittles right now. I'd I've save, already watched it. Save myself services. some fucking time. Just because you fu- fucking pirated. Online. Look, that, <laughs> that wasn't part of the deal. That you said one hundred percent not what you said. At the fucking <laughs> look, go get your fucking skittles. I want to see a video of you eating skittle spaghetti this fucking weekend. That was the fucking bet, <laughs> right? So either you go get skittles, or you you pull up the fucking tape and prove somehow that you you said something different. But yeah, you're not Darth Vader. You cannot alter the deal further like it's not gonna fucking happen you were lucky to get fucking two weeks as it was go buy the skittles and make the spaghetti (laughs) are you gonna make are you gonna make your wife eat skittle spaghetti as well or is it just you i'm I'm very interested do you think i just don't say anything and kind of (laughs) surprise her with it yeah (laughs) but i also pick out all of them except for the red ones so it actually looks like sauce yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I'm just like I put a lot of I drop the sugar in, like a lot of sugar. It's, it's American style. They love yeah. their sugar. Um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, that'll, that'll be something for you to, to work out along the way. We'll see. Uh, I've already watched it. Um, <laughs> uh, Spider Man Miles Morales um, is getting an ultimate edition, which will mm. be uh, a little bit more expensive. Um, and it includes a remastered version of, of Spider-Man, so the yep. PlayStation 4 game. Um, it's going to have upgraded uh, graphics, so it'll be running uh, higher resolution. It's going to have 60 frames per second. They're putting ray tracing in there, um, updating like character models and textures and all that sort of stuff. So I, I'm, I'm kind of a bit surprised that it's not just part of the 
normal, I guess, bundle. Um, and that it's like a $20, $20 upgrade or you know, yeah. whatever it ends up being. A bit strange. Yeah, that that is a bit odd um, because, you know, like, it, if, I, I guess it is a, like it's supposed to be a budget game, right? Like Miles mm-hmm. Morales version. Supposed to be a bit pared not, down. Not re- like it's forty nine US. So if you take right. it into account of um, normal normal games, it's fifty nine. But I guess again they're jacking it up to sixty nine these days. I, like yeah. I don't know what it is in Australia. I don't know if you've seen the prices yet for how much it, not for that game. Not for the, yeah, not that version or anything. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Hmm. I like. A little bit disappointing, uh, I think. Yeah. I think, you know, if I mean, I've played the original Spider-Man, but at the same time, it does seem like the... I, I guess it's it, like they never said that that was like you were going to get it free or whatever. It just felt like Something they being that the game was built off the back of the other Spider-Man game. It's, mm. yeah, it's almost like... Standalone DLC, right? Like, so yeah, it's not a sequel. It's just been upgraded. Uh, it's just a yeah, a version of Spider-Man where he can swing at the correct speed as opposed to being too slow. Um, so yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, it doesn't feel great. I can't put my finger exactly on why though. Uh, I'm still excited for the game. I think it looks fucking rad. Um, yeah. And I'm very excited to play the original Spider-Man on PS5. Uh, but yeah, it would be nicer. It would have been better if it was um, priced better. Sure. Yeah. Um, cool. What else we got that they showed off? Uh, Final Fantasy 16. Um, they kind of kicked that off. That was the, yeah. the thing. It's like medieval... Uh, thought- which are sort of vibes going for it. Yeah. Um, Which is interesting because they've been sort of like heading towards futuristic. Yeah. Sci-fi futuristic. Yeah. Uh, And it looks like they've gone back to the fantasy part of final fantasy, uh, um, or at least from what we've seen so far. Right. Uh, Yeah. I have to wait and see more. Like Final Fantasy games are kind of hard to tell what they're going to be without knowing what the combat system is because they're always so like wildly different from each other. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to sort of see what that is. Um, what else was there? Hogwarts Legacy, the long-rumored um, Warner Brothers game, uh, which is an RPG. Uh, didn't really get a sense of what, the gameplay is of the game, either. yeah, yeah, it was kind yeah. Of a cutscene, yeah. Sorry, um, yeah, I, I didn't really get an idea of what kind of game it was going to be. Uh, so it's hard to tell. Also, J.K. Rowling's a fucking cunt. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm reluctant to put any money in to her pockets. Uh, but I mean, they, the they need to come there. out at this point and sort of distance themselves, right? One hundred percent. Do the do the um the Assassin's Creed thing where it pops up and says, "This game is made by you know multicultural people with different beliefs and all that sort of thing." Um, yeah, you know th- that sort of stuff, and try and distance themselves from her as much as they can to just what, basically be what? like she has nothing to do with this. <laughs> What was that fucking? Remember that tweet? Uh, there's that tweet. Uh, hey, this Minecraft game is really good. Uh, who made it, Dad? Uh, nobody <laughs> came from space. <laughs> that's where that's where we're at with Harry Potter at this yeah. point. Uh, <laughs> hey, it was made, made Harry Potter when by he AI. came from space. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, but, um, mm. all right, there is also some other games here. They shut off Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition, okay. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, which I think they announced that 
already like a while back but we got some like another sort of trailer for that um again yeah doesn't really show much the odds world odd world game odd world, yeah yeah so it shows some gameplay for that one um sort of yeah <laughs> I, I guess that's the kind of thing you need to play right uh yeah uh it doesn't really i don't know yeah I, it's definitely one you need to play mm. uh the odd world games are always better in playing than they are uh, I, I guess the first one was very much a visual spectacle but uh right. um what is visually spectacular has has changed uh games are capable of so much more than uh than that these days so yeah yeah um the next one they also showed off uh call of duty black ops cold war which that that looked pretty cool actually the sort of little mission that they did like the fast and furious the dude was like running up and using people as body shields and throwing like grenades down oh, the, the one where he stabs him in the head and then shoots him and i'm like that was fucking that was some fucking manhunt shit like what the <laughs> fuck <laughs> yeah no, is he going to get a fucking plastic bag over someone's head next? <laughs> uh, yeah, that was fucking brutal. It, it reminded um, me of like um, like 80s action movies, right? Just doing yeah. these over-the-top ridiculous yeah. things, even like capping it off at the end with a, a chase down an um, airport runway following this giant carrier and the carrier then it play, flipping yeah. over. And um, very, yeah, very fast and furious because obviously it's sort of straight out of that but um yeah. it seemed quite over the top like action 80s movie blockbuster type stuff so i don't know man that that has got me more excited than the other stuff that i've seen from that game so far um uh yeah i, I didn't think much of the multiplayer reveal yeah um what we saw of it um i'm annoyed that i didn't get to play it but uh yeah it wasn't particularly uh blown away uh, by what I saw there, it's, it looked kind of janky. Um, but as I as I said, uh, as I have have been saying, I'm only literally only going to be playing multiplayer to unlock weapons for Warzone, so it doesn't really fucking matter. Uh, Call of Duty multiplayer can fuck itself at this point, in my opinion. I've got zero interest in it. Uh, the single player, um, yeah. Traditionally, Treyarch has made a very entertaining uh, single-player campaign, so I'll check that out. I'll probably give it more of a run than I did uh, Modern Warfare, <laughs> which I burnt out on extremely quickly. Um, yeah. And it's got zombies, which yeah. is all that matters. Like, zombies in Warzone, bring it on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just fucking injected into my veins. Hmm. Um, before we go and move on any further, I'm reading quickly on Twitter that apparently uh, PlayStation 5 is sold out in Australia at this stage. Did I just fucking say that like 20 minutes ago? Oh. Anyway. Right. I must yeah. have just missed that. So it took, what, an hour? <laughs> Basically. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be messy on the internet. Um, what else was there that they showed off? Uh, Demon Souls. Looks sick. Looks good. Uh, yeah, played Demon Souls. So neither have I. Um, hopefully, it's not as easy as that guy uh, made it look by one shotting literally everyone he ran into. Apparently, uh, this is the starting area or the tutorial. Even still, it yeah. shouldn't be that fucking easy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I, I was thinking about this at the time. I think like. It's interesting how how much the health bars do, like how much work health bars do in Dark Souls or mm -hmm. the Souls games. And because with, with, but without being a, like when you can't see them, right? Like that big fat guy, uh, the boss sure. in in the that they showed off, without being able to see the yeah the health bars, it was sort of like oh. Like, yeah, I guess he's big and fat. Like, yeah, health bars do a lot of heavy lifting in Souls games because you can see that you're not doing as much damage as you would like, and you can see how much damage you're taking when you get hit because you failed 
that dude was shit at rolling. No wonder he was playing on hyper easy mode. Um, but yeah, like that idea uh, that, like, I, I don't know. I, just, I was just surprised. I'm not very articulate because I'm very hungover and I got up very early. So <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, listeners. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like it's just I, I was just surprised at how much I feel health bars, how much work I feel health bars do hmm. in Souls games. I, I I don't think I'd ever considered it before. But yeah, I think um I think it's also going to be interesting, like how much they sort of like is it a remaster or is it a re is it more of a remake like the, the Tony Hawk Pro Skater or the um right. Resident Evil thing where they go in and they tighten up. A lot of the mechanics and make it feel like a good game or, or is this just like a we've gone in and it's a, it's a graphics overhaul um yeah it's, it sort of looked pretty good like the animations and all that looked smooth so it's kind launch of it's coming to launch yeah so i think it's graphics okay but maybe they've been working on it for a lot longer than i expected mm. um yeah because, like, I've I've read up a little bit, and like a lot of people are saying it's a remake, but I haven't really seen anything that suggests. I haven't had a chance to see like PlayStation put out a blog to say here's Demon Souls and it's a remake, and this is what we're Final doing. Final Fantasy now. has ruined the term remake for the rest of eternity. Now nobody can trust the word remake on any fucking level. <laughs> okay, because well, anytime I hear it. remake, I'm like, they oh, you made it. Remade like the time you fucking remade Final Fantasy VII into shit. You fucking pricks. I'm still annoyed. I'm still grumpy about it. Yep. Anyway. I'm still grumpy about how wrong you are about Final Fantasy VII. We'll see. You just you just don't you don't know. You don't know what you're talking about. God. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Any other games so, that sort of stood out there that they showed off gameplay wise? God of God of War. There yeah, wasn't any game. gameplay, but uh, they ended on the logo. Uh, yeah, uh, you called it from the snow. <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty impressive. To Not be only fair, that, uh, I called the name of it. <laughs> well, I, well, I don't know if that's the name. Is it called God of War Ragnarok? But like I, I said, Ragnarok. While yeah. the leg, like the logo was fucking f- drawing and that sort of thing, yeah. As soon as the R popped up, like the symbol, the R, and then the um, uh, yeah, all the little symbols they did on the the logo. Yeah, man, uh, we were talking over the top when I think Kratos was talking, but still, yeah, <laughs> uh, was, yeah. I, I guess the surprising thing out of that is next year. Does Corey have the balls to get that out next year? All right, like I, I, I'm, I'm keen to watch the the documentary that they make oh, yeah. out of. Like, so uh, yeah, we'll like we'll get those candid shots where he's like, "Well, we committed to 2021, so this is gonna kill me." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They were like, uh, "Actually, this is a launch thing, game, Corey," and he was like, "No." <laughs> No, please. I nearly fucking died last time. Yeah. Um, By the way, if anyone listening hasn't watched that documentary, watch it. Yeah. It's totally fucking worth it. The God of War. I can't remember what it's called. Son of uh, Kratos Rising? No. Something. Just just Google it. Google God of War documentary. Probably enough. Raising Kratos? Raising Kratos? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh yeah watch definitely watch it it was yeah really good i really enjoyed it i've watched it twice yeah now. i watched it recently when i started replaying um god of war a couple months back right it's, it's really good um yeah i guess that's a surprising thing right is that next year like if that sticks that's massive that that means they've got horizon forbidden west yep. next year um as well as god of war Two or, or God, of, I don't think they got God of War Two, um, God of War Ragnarok. Those are two big first party games for for them to push out. Um, yeah, like 
what does Xbox have? What have they got? Halo at this stage. Yeah. Um, uh, um, yeah, that's about it, right? Like, Forza. theoretically, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, dead. <laughs> Sony is already coming out swinging, like, hard. They're two massive, potentially game of the year games, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and they dodged Cyberpunk successfully, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they've got that going for it as well, <laughs> right? Um, um, yeah, no, I can't think of any anything that's exclusive outside of Halo and and Forza, and uh, yeah, mm, not great. Yeah. Uh, Santa was sacrifice, uh, Hellblade too, but yeah, that's not a. I mean. I'm not that, excited for it, but that like, doesn't have the same sort of caliber as as those other games. So we're back. We're back. Um, having a couple of audio issues, you might notice. Uh, but I've li- I've been listening to the Darkest Timeline podcast. Do you ha- listen to this? It's um, no. Ken Jong and Joel McHale talk right. about uh, community, and they talk about uh, COVID stuff. I guess. Hmm. Um, but I I just finished rewatching Community, and uh, so yeah, I've been listening to this. It's pretty fucking funny. But uh, yeah, I always thought like, is our podcast like garbage audio quality? But uh, two like TV stars are making a podcast, and it's constantly some of the worst audio I've ever heard in my entire fucking life. Uh, so. I don't really feel bad about anything that goes on on this podcast. Uh, they also like spend a lot of time talking about nothing at all. They basically listen to the gap. Hey, Joel. Hey, Ken. Glad to hear that you jacked our fucking steez and copied the gap to talk about community. It's real clever. Um, but, you know, you could give us a shout out on the next one. Uh, yeah, like they go on. They, it is like they just waffle about nothing at all. They go off on tangents. I'm doing it right now. Um, yeah. Like, Anyway, it's worth. But that worth was part of the deal, to. right? Is that we talk about their show and then they talk about ours? That's that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the deal. That's the new deal. Okay. Pray we don't hold it further. Um. Anyway, back to what you were saying. Um, what were we saying? We're talking about the no console exclusives uh, for oh, yeah. Xbox. Uh, but yeah, overall. I mean, yeah, my position last week was if I were to get one, I would get a PlayStation. Uh, my position this week is if I were to get one, I would get a PlayStation. Um, they are identical in price. Uh, the only problem is you won't get one on launch now if you're listening to this because they're all fucking sold out. Uh, definitely get the disc one uh, because purely because you'll be able to trade in games, sell games, lend them to friends, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and yeah, I've seen a couple of people talking about how, you know, I, I, I remember before we started the podcast, Morkai was talking about, you know, Discord channel, channel, and he's probably going to wait until, uh, like next year before he buys in. I don't think that's a bad, a bad idea. Uh, like I think there might be something to it. There's, there's not a ton coming on launch. Um, there was a list of the, uh, the like world games, like, right? Yeah, uh, it's Astro's play playroom will be pre-installed on the on the console. Demon Souls, Destruction Destruction All Stars, uh, which I actually I like the look of. I will play that one hundred percent. I think it looks pretty cool. That's that fucking Destruction Derby game where you can get out of the car and stuff. I love the idea. Uh, Miles Morales, Spider Man, uh, and Sackboy. Hmm. Those are the first party games coming at launch. Oh, well, launch isn't... window is cracked, uh, not cracked, <laughs> Ratchet and Crack? Clank as well, right? They're saying, "Hey, Ratchet and Cra- Clank is a is a um is a launch window game. It's not a launch day game, but that could be right, like yeah. February, January, right? Um, yeah, like I, I I don't I don't see any reason why you wouldn't wait it out. Like I don't think like if yeah if you didn't manage to get one on launch. Yeah, I don't think you're going to be missing out 
if you don't buy in again. Um, but yeah, like it's like I'm excited. I'm excited to get a PlayStation. I did. I made my pre-order in time. Uh, I pre-ordered it at the moment. It was available. Um, so like, yeah, I'm excited, but I can see there's a there is definitely an argument for waiting it out. And I, I don't think you'd be making a huge error in judgment if you were to do that. Um, especially if you've got a computer that can run anything at all. Hmm. Um, because, yeah, you'll be able to, to tread water. Uh, provided, like, as long as you've got some way to play fucking Cyberpunk, it doesn't fucking matter, right? Like, if, if, yeah, if you want to play 4K Cyberpunk uh, and you've got a decent computer, like anything with a, I think a 2070 would do it. Oh, not 4K, but uh, 2K, you know, yeah, 1440p. Uh, yeah. Um, not technically 2K, but what we, you know, generally call 2K. Uh, yeah. If, if, yeah. If you've got a 20 series, you, uh, even a 2070 will be able to play Cyberpunk looking real fucking pretty at uh, 1440p. Um, so, yeah, if you've got that, I don't think you need to worry necessarily. Um, or you could just play it on your fucking regular Xbox One X or hmm. PlayStation 4. You know, like it won't have the shiny, shiny uh, like reflections and stuff, but the fucking rad concert CD Projekt Red will like straight upgrade yeah. your game. So. Yeah, we talked about it. There's last no week, fucking right? stress. Yeah, it's fucking rad. Like you've got there's there's literally no rush, um, which is good. I think it's a cool cool situation to have. Um, speaking of building, uh, one speaking sec. of PCs, before okay. we get to that, one last I, thing before we jump I, on the next thing. Uh, I, I had such a fucking good segue. Yeah, you have to wait. Ruin it. Go the, ahead. The one thing I'm sort of surprised about in relation to the price is um, it's cheaper in Australia than it is in the US and Europe by uh, about $50, which is pretty insane. What? Um, yeah, the price conversion. So it, it, they've actually gone to bat with the Xbox price. So I don't know if somebody at Xbox made the mistake <laughs> and forgot to include tax on the cost of the Xbox series consoles, but um, they're, they're missing the sales tax that we normally put on over here in terms of uh, products. So when you advertise something and you say it's four ninety nine, which is what the Xbox series is, you go yeah. in a store and you actually pay five fifty, right? Because they don't have, they don't right. show you yeah. the sales tax. Like you pay that once you get to the register because each state has their own tax that they apply to. Most states is like five that don't. Um, each state has sales tax. And so when you do the conversion of... Four ninety nine to Australian, it's seven hundred and fifty, but you're missing that tax. So it's actually it should have been f- five fifty, and then convert that to Australian. It works out to be about eight hundred. Uh, so I feel right. like it's, I don't know. Maybe they knew that, or somebody just completely goofed and forgot to add the sa- forgot about sales tax. But it's yeah. yeah, it's cheaper to buy these consoles in Australia by about fifty dollars. It must be yeah. It must be fucking close, because we've still got GST. So direct, right. directly, uh, four ninety nine. I looked it up earlier. Four ninety nine is like six ninety or something. Yeah. And then you tack on GST is sixty nine bucks. Uh, but the GST is 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 already on that price. When they're saying yeah, the console yeah. is seven fifty, that GST yep. is already included. Without the GST, yep. you knock out ten percent, and so that would be seven. Hundred and ten dollars, something like that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. But to uh, me, like, I'm, it felt it felt like someone made a mistake on the pricing because you convert, even if you convert European pricing to Australia, like, it's still it's not the same price. It's still missing right. fifty bucks somewhere. So it felt yeah. like that they convert. Someone converted the Australian price. Was like that looks good. Let's go with that. <laughs> And then Sony was like, "What the fuck are they doing?" And so they're like, well, "We have to, we have to do it as well." Then that's kind of how I feel about it. It's just like, right. like somebody fucked up a price along the way somewhere and was like, "Oh shit!" All right, <laughs> never mind. We can't change it now. Um, 
so there you go. There's mm-hmm. a, there's something we can uh, we don't have to complain about is the Australia tax has been made up in this case. It's mm-hmm. it's cheaper, which is yeah. good. <laughs> All right, uh, um, but you're building a new PC. Uh, I am. I've I've built it. Uh, yeah. So uh, which is why this podcast the weekend, is it together. broken. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit broken. We like, yeah, a bunch of shit wasn't plugged in. Don't have RTX in, uh, voice installed. Uh, all this kind of stuff. Um, fucking, my plan was to wait until I had a 30 series graphics card to install RTX voice, but fucking who knows if I'll have a 30 series graphics card anytime soon. Uh, Cause apparently numbers are extremely limited. Uh, we've got no idea what third party uh, like graphics cards are actually coming. Uh, the founders editions don't arrive until fucking October. Uh, yeah. Who fucking knows? Who fucking knows? Um, Anyway, I did build a, a new PC. It's got a, a B550 um, chipset motherboard in it, um, an MSI Tomahawk. It's a good card, uh, good motherboard. I'm a fan of it. Uh, I'm reviewing it um, mm. for Ozgamers, so I'll have full full thoughts. My like the main takeaway, I think it's yeah, it's a good. It is good. Uh, it comes bundled with um, oh, not bundled. It comes with uh, gaming dragon software, uh, which is actually like surprisingly good. It's like uh, full, it downloads, like auto downloads all your fucking drivers and keeps everything up to date. I think it's like, it does a really good job of that shit. You can use it to turn off all the fucking RGB bullshit, um, which I hate. I hate RGB. I'm just not a fan. Um, and yeah, like you can, you can really, like take full control of your PC with it, which is good. Yeah. Um, I'm a fan of. My biggest complaint about it is that it. Uh, so it's got, it's got PCIe four, which is why I got it, uh, which is why I went AMD instead of Intel. Uh, apparently, it's. <laughs> I've been reading the thirty eighty reviews, and apparently, <laughs> uh, it's a negligible difference. Yeah, sure. <laughs> So I think I said this a couple of weeks back. Is that it's not going to yeah. make any difference because the PCI Express three is barely used on the the twenty twenty series, yeah. and so um, I, well, I it mean, does make a massive difference for your PCIe M two drives. That's sure. where it comes in. Yeah, uh, that's the big change. Um, the it's only got so it's not, but like I guess the the. B550 chipset only has PCIe 4 on one of its M2 slots. Um, that's pretty that's standard across the board for the chipset. Um, so you wind up in this situation. Uh, the the mistake that I think this motherboard, the only real mistake that this motherboard makes is that uh, it's lower uh, PCIe M2 slot. Shares lanes with the PCIe uh, slots. That's how most of them are done. Uh, like mine's that way as well. What a lot of the B550 ones, because uh, I've been reading a fuck ton of, mm. of uh, reviews, what I've seen uh, is, because I, I like as soon as I saw this, I'm like, why? Why would it do that? The only problem, reason it's a hu- like, it's not a huge problem. The only reason it's any kind of problem at all in this case is because it doesn't have Wi-Fi and it's, doesn't have great onboard sound. So if you wanted to improve those things, you need those fucking PCIe lanes. For Wi-Fi? Uh, but they, if you want lot Wi-Fi, yeah, you, you need a Wi-Fi card. So you need sure, but it's not going to use a PCI Express card. Like, it's not going to use a graphics card slot, is it? No, no, not, not the graphics card slots. The 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 16 by is untouched by any of this. It doesn't get affected. Yeah. It's just the, the lower two PCI E slots, the right. what is it the two four four by slots? Okay, get yep. downgraded. One gets turned off entirely, and the other one gets downgraded to one by, which isn't a huge problem, right? Like that's what I'm saying, right? It's not a massive problem. It's just annoying because what other B550 motherboards do is they share lanes with the SATA ports instead. Yeah, and 
that would be an improvement in this case because the PCIe 16 slot obstructs two of the SATA ports. Okay. So it, right? it lets you know. <laughs> so, like, it doesn't, like, it doesn't, it, it physically obstructs them. So you can't fucking get to the fucking things if your graphics card is plugged in, which, you know, I... I don't think is the what is the biggest. It's not a deal breaker, right? That's what I'm saying, right? It's not a deal breaker. It's just annoying because if the P, uh, if the M2 slot shared with the SATA ports that were blocked, obstructed by the like physically obstructed by the graphics card, then it like you wouldn't worry about it, right? You'd be like, well, I don't have those two slots anyway. Like, fuck it. Um, but instead, yeah, it. it undoes those two PCIe slots and, or like breaks one of them and downgrades the other. You only need one buy for a sound card anyway, so, or a Wi-Fi card. Like it's, it's, it's like I said, it's not a big deal. It's just sure. such a weird fucking design choice yeah. considering other boards like have a different solution. Yeah. And this one physically obstructs. The and it's one of those things where unless you know about how that works, you you kind of just put things in and you're like, why the fuck is this not working? Mm. And you spend like hours reading up and all of a oh, sudden yeah. it's like, oh, it's because it's plugged into this thing. You're like, yeah, okay. But <laughs> like yeah. for somebody that doesn't really know much about PCs, they get in a lot of trouble with that sort of thing. Like it is phenomenal how easy it is to make a PC these days mm. and spectacular how easy it is to fuck up without knowing how you fucked up. Like, yeah, I think that, I had the same uh, problem. Yeah, right. And I put my M2 drive in because it's the first one I've I've had. I've never used an M2 yeah. drive before. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm using the Kingston KC twenty five hundred, which I'm also reviewing. Uh, it is fucking. It's a fucking beast. It is ridiculous. I boot win. I put win. I uh, installed Windows on it as my C drive. Um, it's got like it comes with like imaging software, which is, I think is fucking awesome. Mm. Um, so you can clone your drive directly to it if you want um well it's just a code uh but yeah like comes to that uh it, it is lightning fast uh it spends more time in uh post than it does booting into fucking windows and yeah and then when, once it's in it's fucking woo done uh i load i load into warzone faster than nate does now hmm. so i can steal the fucking helicopter uh, which is obviously the most important thing. That's that's the measure of a good hard drive. <laughs> yeah. Um, and <laughs> yeah. Time to helicopter. That's an easy time to helicopter. <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's yeah, it's a fantastic fucking uh, a hard drive. It is PCIe three only, uh, only. Uh, but if you like, yeah, if you're on an Intel board, I don't think uh, I've. I've done some uh, benchmarks. I don't have the numbers on me, but it is it is a fucking fast card. Uh, I've got Nate doing benchmarks for his uh, his M2 drives as well, uh, so I can show some direct comparisons. But I've been looking around and benchmark wise, yeah, it fucking pants as shit. It's mm. what is it like thirty thirty five hundred. And twenty nine hundred read write, and in, I'm I'm getting something like thirty, like thirty four eighty or something, and right three thousand, right? Uh, like yeah, it's fucking, it's belting, it's fantastic, it's a really good uh, hard drive. Uh, I've got uh, thirty two gigs of RAM, uh, thirty two hundred RAM in it. Um, I like it. I think it's good. Uh, I think it, you know. I'm glad I went to 32 gigs because now I can run Chrome at the same time as Warzone, uh, which is nice. Um, and, you, and you were saying still, that you're getting good frames in, in Warzone as well. So I, I you've yeah. cancelled your pre order for the new graphics no, card, right? I don't need a graph. I don't okay. need a 30 series anymore. Um, yeah, I am, getting like, I've, doesn't matter. I've, <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's never, it's never going to happen. Um, yeah, I've seen like a 30% increase in my frames. Uh, but I, you know, obviously I've got a new CPU as well. Like, uh, that's obviously doing a lot of the fucking heavy lifting. Uh, sure. um, uh, so I've got an AMT 3700X, 
Um, is there anything else in this thing? Uh, it's all, you know, Lee and Lee. I like the fucking, it's a good tower to fucking stall stuff in. Yeah, but uh, you, really didn't go to, fucking... you didn't go water cooler, cooler, right? I think you're saying. No, I've literally just got the stock fan. People yeah. on the Discord uh, will have seen my photo of me installing it upside down. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a classic uh, um, move that uh, didn't Henry Cavill like do this exactly the same thing? <laughs> Did he? I think he did. He put something in upside down, and then like at the end of his video, it's like the right way because he went back the next day and fixed it. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, Krusty Raven was, uh, yeah, very upset. Uh, it was not helping uh, his his OCD, I think. Um, but yeah, I, I took some Henry Cavill build photos uh, per your uh, inspiration. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they needed the music though. They needed. Video. Well, see, I didn't. I didn't want to do a video, but uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the difference I think is is quite striking in that you know he's building on a table and you know everything's really clean and stuff, and I'm sitting there on my fucking floor surrounded by bits and bobs. Someone's like, "Oh, why are you building it on a carpet?" I'm like, "My entire fucking apartment's carpet. I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to do otherwise." Uh, I could go stand in the toilet and do it. Plastic but, sheet uh, on the ground. Otherwise, that would make it worse, fun. right? Yeah, that would be so much worse. I just, I'm like, we're at a point in time where, like, you just don't... How how are you installing anything into your computer without touching the frame of your computer and discharging static that way? Like, how is that happening? Like, playing fucking Operation or some shit, like... That's how you, I assume you install it without touching the frame of your computer. I'm like holding onto the fucking thing, like cramming fucking RAM into the f- fucking go. <laughs> Thermal paste just everywhere in every single joint. <laughs> I had to redo my thermal paste. <laughs> I uh, it didn't do a bad job. I may I may have gone like I may have used a little too much because uh, when I had to reset the fan. Um, uh, there was a little like it had made it to spreading out the side, so it may have li- a little too much. Uh, You're supposed to put like, no, a little drop. You were just like it was. Yeah, I was like fucking <laughs> like a Bukaki film. Um, no, the real reason I got to do it is because I bought it from J Car, and uh, I'm, I'm somewhat concerned about how good it is. But I figured I was going to be going to a computer store to pick up a 30 series graphics card back when I still had dreams of being able to borrow one. Uh, so I would just wait and get some good stuff uh, when, you know, some Arctic Silver or whatever the fuck when I got to the computer store. Uh, and this would do, this would have tied me over until I got to that. Because obviously it comes with thermal paste on it. Uh, but. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's oh, yeah. I don't know if this is still the case, but I know that uh, back in the day, if you had an AMD <laughs> CPU, uh, yeah, you like you had a fucking fire extinguisher on standby. So uh, yeah, I just didn't want to. Oh, I wasn't yeah trusting it, but um, yeah. Anyway, um, I I don't think like there wasn't. It was a back-breaking build, I think, because, you know, doing it on the floor and hunched over um, was a bit annoying. Uh, but, there, like, nothing went particularly wrong. I did. I thought I installed the RAM into the wrong slots, hmm. right? Because uh, it had a picture in the booklet of which ones were, like, you know, A1, A2, yeah. Uh, I just call them 1, 2, 3, and 4. And in my mind, well, like when I installed it, I'm like, okay, so it's got to be in one and three. Uh, incorrect. I was That's incorrect. Two and four. It's got to be in. It's got to be in two and four. <laughs> yeah. By accident, I installed it in two and four. I'm like, oh, I got it in the wrong fucking slot. So I got to chuck it in one and three. So I chucked it in one and three, and uh, the uh, on post it told me it was in the wrong slot. <laughs> it's like. The motherboard itself is like, uh, yo, champ, if you've got two sticks of RAM, dipshit, two and four. Like, uh, turn it off, put it in the right fucking slots, 
back to the slots that I originally had it in when I accidentally had it correct. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, but yeah, like no no big pro- problems. Like the biggest <laughs> the biggest problem with the install was putting the fan in the wrong way. And the reason I put it upside down was because uh, the clearance on the the lever between like one of the mobile heat sinks and uh, the little snap yeah. lever you put in to to close the fucking fan, the clearance on it was. Uh, not, <laughs> not I, I took some skin off trying to get my fucking finger mm. down into that thing to, to push it down. It was a pain in the dick. And so, yeah, originally the reason I put it in upside down is because I'm like, well, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> my finger's not getting in there. Uh, yeah. So you, you know what they was- need? Those like swivel logos. I, I think the, didn't one of the PlayStations like yeah. the PlayStation or PlayStation you had a logo, so depending on which way you had it, that like, like spin around. Yeah, that was a three, wasn't it? I'm pretty sure it was the because it was it could stand up. Okay, maybe the two did it as well. The one definitely didn't. Yeah, maybe the two did. But that's yeah. what they need on the uh, on the fans, like a rotating logo, so when people put it in the wrong way, they can just be like, ah, yeah. oh, so Crusty Rogan doesn't get upset at me. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, otherwise, yeah, I enjoyed. Like I had fun. I love. I love building computers. Uh, I love every single step of it. Um, the, you know, jumping on fucking logical increments, a PC par picker and going through and making concessions to budget and jumping on static ice, doing yeah. a fucking quick pass to work out whether it's cheaper to buy it from like seven different places or to save on postage. Yeah, and buy you realize like once you go to the cheapest food. place you can find, they charge like $30 in postage. Yeah, exactly. like, <laughs> Back to the, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man. Um, but uh, yeah. And no, you, it sounds like you're not going to finish your build until maybe mid or mid October sometime. Uh, I might not finish my build until fucking, I don't know. By the time Walker buys a fucking PlayStation 5 at this rate, like, I don't fucking know. Apparently, if you don't get, uh, if you don't get a thirty series today, you might not get one until twenty twenty one. Yeah. Uh, if you don't get a thirty eighty, rather, you might not get one until twenty twenty one. Uh, like stocks are that limited, so <laughs> it's going to be a fucking shit fight. Right. Uh, and so, the, yeah. is it one retailer in Australia that's selling them, which is uh, more than what waited. initially was going to happen, but. Yeah, they're the only ones selling the Founders Edition. I do still want a Founders Edition, uh, but at this point, I will take any 3080 I can get. Uh, yeah. They're doing a raffle on M Wave. Uh, I think by the time you, if no, oh yeah, you might have like an hour or so to enter the raffle by the time this goes live. Uh, sure. So I think it'll just be starting if you listen at the moment that this goes up, the raffle will be beginning. You might have like three minutes. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, like uh, if I win the raffle, cool. Uh, hopefully instead I can just buy a fucking card online uh, and I don't need to worry about it. If I buy a card online and I win the raffle, somehow, uh, obviously I, I buy a scratchy because I'm <laughs> the luckiest man alive. Uh, and then uh, I use the winnings from that to pay for the two graphics cards I now have. Uh, no, apparently you can cancel one, like one of your orders if it doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, if, if you've got, if you somehow get both. So yeah, no big deal. Uh, but yeah, I do still want a 30 series. I've, I've read the reviews. They look fucking awesome. If you've got a 20, 2080 Ti, uh, apparently it's only about a 15 or 20% bump. Yeah. And I say only, uh, because that's still a pretty big bump, but I mean, uh, you, the, the pricing. You come back to pricing, right? Is that the twenty eighty is, exactly. is more expensive at this this stage? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you're upgrading, it's not really like is it worth it? Yeah. Hmm. Twenty eighty Ti. Sorry. Ti. Yeah. Um. But yeah. No. Otherwise, reviews are all good. Uh, I've been talking to Costa, uh, tech editor, editor. In general, at Oz Gamers, uh, he's got a he's got a Founders Edition. Uh, he's got a couple of third parties. He reckons the MSI uh, thirty eighty is the the beast 
uh, amongst uh, the animals, but um, I think it's also the flagship version of like, I think they sent him the flagship version of the card. So yeah. Uh, and it's got like three eight pin connectors for power. Oh, yeah. Three. I don't need, I don't need to buy a fucking another power supply just for the fucking, just for the cables at this, at this rate, just so I can fucking modular the fucking thing. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. My motherboard has a 24 pin connector and this thing needs 24 pins as well. This fucking bananas. Anyway, uh, but apparently, yeah, it rips. Uh, the Faris edition itself is quiet as fuck. Uh, he was saying that in his tests, he's not seeing a large amount of uh, thermal output or thermal increase on the CPU. Uh, I know a lot, a lot of the reviews I read said that they were finding that it was increasing the heat, the temperature of the, C the CPU, uh, the Founders Edition, because it's got that forward, back, like front and back fan design where it blows out. Like yeah, it's got an intake and, a, and an outtake, outtake yeah. Um, yeah, he was saying that uh, in his uh, tests, he's not seeing that happen, uh, but it is heating up his RAM. Yeah. Uh, and that seems like that, like everyone has said, it's definitely heating up RAM, and some people are saying... They're, they're not seeing much on the CPU. Uh, I think, I'm pretty sure Costa's got uh, uh, liquid cooling. So maybe that is why it's not a problem. I'm just going to check and make sure he's put his review up so I'm not fucking scooping him on his own fucking review. No, he, he definitely did because I saw it yesterday. Right. Um, yeah, well, this yeah. morning. Yeah, good. Yeah, cool. Um, which is, yeah. Yeah, cool. Go read his review um, on ozgamers.com uh, to check it out. And yeah, uh, I'm, I'm keen, but who fucking knows? Who fucking knows if it'll happen or not? Hopefully. Uh, I'm hoping it does. Anyway, uh, that's building a PC in 2020. Hmm. The same week when you put down money for a fucking PlayStation 5. Um, yeah, in the middle of a global recession. Yay! Good times, good times. Awesome. Anyway, video games? Should we talk about some games? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, should we kick things off? What do we got? Marvel's Avengers. Oh, yeah? Let's go with that. I guess we'll just go in this order. Talked about that last week. Um, I ended up finishing it after oh, yeah? we, we recorded. I was pretty close to the end. Um, sort of echo a lot of the thoughts that I had last week where... I enjoy sections of that game, mainly the set piece campaign missions that feel like they're, you know, they're telling a story and they've got some good design behind them. Because uh, there are a couple of missions in there that are just really, they feel like they're filler missions. They're a bit more wide open. You're sort of just going after arm bases and yeah. um, sort of very generic. Like you get into some of these buildings and they just feel like it's very samey. So. Um, I, like I don't know if if you ended up playing much more of it because you sort of said you was pretty early into it last week. Uh, yeah, and I didn't get a chance to play a bit more. Yeah. I was going to play on the weekend, but it didn't happen. Right. Um. So yeah, I, I kind of just echoing those same feelings from last week, as well as saying that like, I, I just I still don't get the whole. There's multiple people that you can play as, and everybody has different like experience and power levels as you get them you kind of like hey here's black widow and she's like level zero or level one and she's got like 10 power and you, you've just switched from a character that was like level six with 40 power or something like that like you kind of feel like you're not getting someone that's powerful anymore you're kind of downgrading significantly yeah. and so it's really yeah. forcing you to um grind not not grind but when it gives you the option of who do you want to play as, you're like, well, I'm going to play as the most powerful character that I've got every single time because yeah. what's the point? Why wouldn't um, you? Yeah. Yeah, and it's not like the, the gear that you're getting is specific to your character. Your your heroes are leveling and they're getting experience, but they're not, like all they're getting is skill points. They're not getting the gear or anything like that. And so you get into the yeah. last mission, you know, without giving away spoilers, but you play different characters and you're switching between one character who is, you know, 50 levels above this other character and it kind of just doesn't make a lot of sense it's really weird 
So I just don't mm. like that sort of thing. Um, but for the most part, like I still enjoyed that game. I, I'm kind of curious to see what the end game looks like when they start releasing their raid content or whatever it is that they'll be doing and how interesting or deep that is. Or is it just going to be more of like the same like the, the same missions yeah. that they've already got in there and it's just like now you can play them with your friends and they're a little bit longer um or are they gonna make it a bit more puzzly like you um you know what we've we've learned from games like destiny and the division like how they do their raid content um i think that's sort of like the benchmark or even well, yeah. warcraft as well um obviously yeah yeah that's like the benchmark of like raid content and if they're not doing that and then they're really missing out on the whole games as a service and why would you even bother at that point um so yeah i don't know man like i enjoyed it for what it was but it's it's not the type of game where i'm going to be sitting there playing it every week at this stage like i need to see what else they're going to offer me i'm happy that i've finished the single player campaign um i enjoyed the story so yeah i don't know if it's going to offer me that much more at this point um yeah uh what else we got here next up we've got tell me why chapter two oh Uh, here we go i went back to it so i spoke about this game a couple weeks back i didn't get to it last week to check out the second chapter but i played um chapter one i was kind of in the minds of i was not really enjoying it the the story in particular i think the, the acting is is well done voice acting pretty looking game didn't enjoy the gameplay um and some of the design behind it is not it's quite challenging to do because it's such a story-based game that if you're moving around the environment and interacting with objects you get that thing where a character is saying something and then it's sort of like it cuts them off and now they're saying like a different conversation because you've reached the checkpoint type thing like you see that happen a lot um yeah and just the the way that first chapter ended wasn't really a like a revelation or anything surprising it just went sort of where i expected it to go and it was very slow i felt like it was very slow uh storytelling and so i wanted i wanted to check out chapter two before i made up my mind there's three chapters um and if it got to a point where chapter two was not doing it for me then i wasn't gonna finish it like i just didn't want to put any more time into it uh, and I, I really liked their other games like I, I liked life is strange i thought that was really well done um yeah i got about halfway through chapter two before i stopped playing this one i just wow i'm not into it at all like i just don't like the story or what it's doing like it just doesn't feel challenging at all um it's very basic gameplay kind of just talking to people most most of the time this one did like an investigation scene where you're in a police station going through files and doing research and looking through documents. And even at that stage, it just felt tedious. Like I'm looking at a document and it's saying, now you've got to find document number TA5123. And then you go look for document TA5123. And then that one says, all right, now you've got to go look for this one. And it's just not interesting at all. Uh, and yeah. then by the time that like two, three hours that I played was up and where, like what the thing behind that was, like the story element, I was like, man, this is just not, this is just so dull. <laughs> like it's not exciting at all. Um, so I stopped, stopped playing, went and opened up like the Wikipedia page or the, um, uh, like a YouTube walkthrough and then just watched like parts of chapter four like skimmed through it and wow. uh i think i made the good choice because that game ends and i'm like all right i don't know who that character is really oh. but um the thing that they're saying just does not seem interesting at all like i don't know if they explain the weird twin powers that they've got because obviously but um maybe you can explain it'd it be better to me but they the two characters have these twin powers where they can communicate to each other telepathically and uh, recall memories from their childhood, which is one of the gameplay elements of like remembering scenes and being like, hey, I remember it this way. And Tyler is like, no, actually, I remember it this way. Uh, and then deciding what was actually the right way uh, that you should progress through the story. And so like, I just watched that last sort of um, chapter three on YouTube 
just skimming through and i was like yeah this is like it it doesn't get to a point where you're like holy shit like that is insane this is crazy what's going on yeah very generic i just thought boring a boring story <laughs> so a bit disappointing considering I, I really liked uh life is strange quite a lot i thought it was mm. um really well done and, and like just other adventure games like that i've played have interesting stories that um like i like this the sci-fi not sci-fi um like a mysterious nature of some of these adventure games like weird shit is going on and trying to figure out what's happening this just doesn't seem to have even though it's got an underlying theme of that like it just doesn't really go in there anywhere it kind of just it's yeah. there because it's there it's not really explained um so yeah i don't know man like i was not it, it, the game didn't do well critically like it's it's like a seven on metacritic or something and even then i just feel like that might be too high like i would i would rate it a lot lower personally but games get right. skewed when they're reviewed um so i, I don't know i like i don't even know who, who to recommend this to if you like those types of games because i mean you like you do like those kinds of games and you couldn't bring yourself to finish it. So I do not understand yeah, how you could. Yeah. Um so I, I don't know, man. Like a really disappointing game from them, I feel like. Hopefully they can uh I don't know, come back, do something better in the future. Cause they've got a couple of games coming out that uh is it Twin Mirrors has been announced by Don't Nod. It's got a release date soon. Uh, I don't I think I don't it was December. I don't like the games, so. <laughs> yeah, December release for, for them. Right. Um, anyway, that's that. Uh, I think that is also like an adventure game, the thriller. Um, that one could be yeah, really, right. hopefully a bit better. Anyway, um, only hope. the other game I've been playing is a mobile game on the Apple Arcade. It is called A Monster's Expedition, and right. it's a puzzle game where you are this little monster. Uh, it's like an isometric game, top down. You're going from these really tiny islands, and you're trying to get from one island to another. They're very small, little, little like puzzle games, um, and the islands are separated by water, and you need to figure out how do you get from one island to the next. And most of the time, it's like cutting down a tree, uh, and then moving that tree around as a log to try and make paths. Um, and, and the way that you move the tree around is kind of like you roll it across the ground, but it goes in one direction as you roll it, if it's lying flat, and it'll just keep rolling unless it hits something or it goes off the side of the, the island and it'll fall in the water. Um, the other way is to sort of push it from it standing vertically up to then lying horizontally flat and then pushing it vertically up again. So moving it that way is another way that you can move it. And it's just about like trying to figure out how to get these logs into positions on the water where you can stand on it and then go to the next part of the island or the next island. And then it's like, all right, here's another little puzzle island. And it's like, this is where the tree is. And there's a couple of rocks on this island and the rocks will block your path from going through. You got to try and figure out how to navigate around that rock to where you got to push the next log. Uh, and you get on the next little island and all of a sudden there's two trees on there and eventually it's like, all right, now you're putting two trees together and making like a little raft and trying to get on that raft and pushing yourself off a rock into the next island. And then they throw up bigger trees and it's a longer log and they're sort of, the main idea is just getting trees and building like little bridges to get from one island to the next. Uh, and it keeps like changing the little puzzle elements in between it. Um, I guess the only sort of criticism I've got about it is it doesn't feel like a a structure to the islands you sort of navigate through because sometimes there'll be like two paths that you can go and there'll be um you know you can cut down like three trees and there's it'll split off into two different islands you can walk to and then that just sort of takes you down a road and you don't really know if you're going in the right direction um, and eventually you sort of you're uncovering this world and the fog of war is sort of disappearing as you go across island to island. Um, and there are these like travel points that you can get to and that allows you to fast travel to certain 
areas and that kind of zooms back out into the world and you can kind of see like where you've been and sort of like what you still need to explore so it doesn't feel like there's any um like correct way to go like it sort of just branches out all of a sudden and you sort of just explore different areas very much in like a uh what was the game i played recently um uh let me look at my list the witness i was playing a bunch of the witness recently uh, like that that game sort of teaches you the basic mechanics of a puzzle game like here's lines and how how you solve this puzzle and once you get past like the first couple of areas it really branches out and you can then explore different parts of the island of the witness you don't necessarily have to go like a specific order um, it definitely helps if you do it do it in a specific way because you'll learn uh, more about the game but it's not really holding you back and that's kind of what this game feels like is that uh, most of this expedition is um letting you sort of freely explore these islands and the the water around it and sort of just discover different little puzzle puzzle ways that the game uh opens up along its time so yeah i've kind of just been playing that while yeah. um tv ads are rolling on the basketball <laughs> <laughs> like you'll pick it up uh, it, it's the type of thing where you can do that right like yeah. there's a two minute three minute ad break some of these islands only take like 30 40 seconds to get through and other ones yeah. can really stump you you're like man i just don't know how to do this um it's really intuitive it's got like a reset button on each island so you can just if you feel like you've screwed something up you just hit reset it, it's just, you know everything goes back to normal there's also an undo button so if you've accidentally pushed a tree log in the wrong direction or you've you know you, you've you've spent like the last 30 seconds trying to figure out this puzzle and you accidentally press the wrong button and then you just press undo and it, it just puts it back to where it was it's pretty forgiving um so yeah i, I think I, I saw this one posted by uh jonathan blow on twitter and so i thought i'd check it out as as a puzzle game um cool. so yeah you've got apple an apple phone a monsters expedition it's out now on that device um yeah it's 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 kind of cool cool uh, uh what else we got do you want to talk about some stuff oh yep sure i didn't, uh, know, speaking I didn't, of didn't realize you had games phone game. <laughs> yeah i noticed um <laughs> uh speaking of mobile games i'm still playing um what should we call it uh idol idol, idol, idol legacy slayer slayer idol slayer uh, yes yeah, so am i yeah um i'm up to a point now where i've got these little minions and uh yeah i really only check in to to see like to reset them um, what's your um ascension cps bonus ascension cps bonus let's That's have on a the, quick the main screen so this is a, an idle game on the mobile phone <clears throat> 896724 right okay I meant What's like 400,000. Right. Yeah. You get to a point where you really start fucking chunking them up. Like, uh, I don't know if you've got any of the minions yet. I have. Yeah, I've got two. Um, Which ones? I have the White oh, Knight. You can't, yeah, you can't get the wizard. No, you can't get the Iron Golem without the wizard and you can't get the skeleton without the fucking... Iron Golem, so... I've got a max level White Knight and a level yep. 25 Dark Wizard who is That's just about to pop game. in 15 minutes. Nice. Uh, oh, yeah. My Skellington and White Knight are going to pop in two minutes, uh, but I will put it away and not pay any attention to it. Um, it's too late. I'm, I'm in. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm at a point now. They... They did an update. They've made some updates, added some new things, some really active things, like less than idle things. Uh, yeah. But I jumped on the Discord uh, uh, for the the game. All right. Uh, to see if... Well, there was something I wanted to ask him specifically. I had like, oh, yeah. Um, I was like, idle not killing... I, I had a quest to kill a bunch of slimes and I was idle not killing many slimes and I was killing a shit ton of something else mm -hmm. and I wanted to know if it was broken for slimes and I didn't get an answer on that but I did notice some interesting things. Apparently uh, the game originally started off as an idle Mario game. Uh, that, was... <laughs> that explains the uh, 
the cubes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and the jumping. And then when he decided he didn't want to get the shit suit out of him, he decided it would no longer be in Mario game. But um, yeah, they they did an update where you've got like there's actual platforming now. If you go through a special portal, um, they made that easier in the most recent update, which is annoying as fuck because I beat it while it was still hard as shit. Uh, there's a there's so a we, skill that you can uh, make platforms appear on the the holes, right? Yeah, uh, but they also like they just gen- it's generally easier as well, okay. generally more forgiving. Um, but yeah, I I finished it on hard mode. I uh, beat Dark Souls two before the patch, you know. <laughs> um, yep. But yeah, they uh, they did that. They added uh, oh, he added Polo. Uh, the the developer is a single guy. Uh, he added a um, you, the the boxes now follow you. Magnets. They don't like yeah. Like there's a magnet for the box now, uh, which is pretty helpful. You don't have to like hit it 100 percent of the time. Uh, they show up while already? you're boosting now. Uh, it's an ability. Well, it's oh, it's, it's, that that wasn't like the newest one, but it it came in pretty recently since right. we've last talked about it. Yeah, I thought it was like an upgrade. Um, yeah, it's definitely an upgrade, but it wasn't there for ages. Um, yeah, okay. okay. So, yeah, all right. Since it's the last time we talked about it, because I've been playing it for the last couple of weeks. We just haven't talked about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, they, yeah, you can now get boxes while boosting. You couldn't, they didn't show up before. Like They were specifically geared to not show up before while boosting, hmm. but now they will show up while you're boosting, which uh, has significantly increased. Uh, I got, I had, so there's a gemstone rush where you, you get like way more gemstones. Yeah. Um, so coins and gems are worth like 15 25. or 25. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you wind up like, that's a huge boost to your uh, your output or your income. Uh, if you can couple it, I got it with with uh, like 2000% bonus to, to coins. Yeah. And I got it while I was in the midst of a nine times. Yeah. So I disgusting. I was trying <laughs> to get to like fifty decillion uh, for like some some quest. I needed mm. to unlock some quests at fifty decillion, and uh, I'd spent legitimately. I had not reset in two days, um, just grinding my way up to fifty decillion. And then I got all this shit and I blitzed. I made it to like 200 decillion before I even like realized, like I just jumped into some fucking coins and I was at 200 decillion. I'm like, uh, what? I spent 48 hours trying to get to 32 decillion and now I'm at 200 out of fucking nowhere. Yeah. So I bought the fucking quests and then like, yeah, I went fucking ham. I need to... Made it just shy of Undecillion before it ran out, uh, which is the next level up. Um, but yeah, now I'm back down to chump shit, unfortunately. Um, yeah, uh, it's a it's a good game for I don't know, you know, it's idle, right? Like it's, a, it's an idle game. It's got some activeness to it. I would like there to be some reason to upgrade shit earlier on beyond just trying to get magnets. That's basically the only reason you do it anymore. It's because each upgrade you buy is worth a magnet. Sure. Uh, or it costs so little that you may as well do it. Uh, like it's it's such a negligible amount. Or you get an achievement for upgrading past somewhere. Like if you can get to like 500, you get an achievement. And achievements are worth a uh, percentage bonus. So you may as well fucking do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's not worth upgrading. I'd love for them, uh, the game to work out some reason to do it, to to give us a reason. But yeah, otherwise, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, it's good fun. Uh, mm-hmm. What else? Uh, games. Oh yeah, Underlords. Not on the list. Should be, but Underlords. Okay. Still playing Underlords. Having a lot of fun. I'm playing with the uh, the guys every now and then. Uh, after like golf or when we don't have enough players for Among Us. Sure. Uh, I managed to get my flawless 
knockout victory yesterday. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was revolting. I went Druids and Brutes. Okay. Uh, added Heartless into the mix almost mm. directly from the get go because I got like two. So I started with uh, Enchantress, Lifestealer, uh, um, Alchemist, and. And the dude who summons trees, whatever the fuck his name is. Nature's Prophet? Tree. Nature's Prophet, that's him. Yeah. So, um, so pe- for people that haven't played Dota Underlords for a while, uh, the druids changed. They're, they're no longer giving you a star level. They now spawn uh, like summons, right? Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, they're shamans now, not druids. My bad. Uh, um, but yeah, they, they, and you can. Like, there's a lot of ways to really buff summons. But summons are just generally pretty powerful in knockout because you've only got four opportunities to fucking do something about them. Um, and early on, it's it's like... Uh, like, early summons is a guaranteed early win in knockout uh, because the earlier... Like, you've never got the fucking tools you require to fucking beat them. Hmm. Um, you can even, like, just stall people out. Uh, if you've got someone's, if, if you can't beat them, you can still just stall them out. It's fucking annoying shit. Anyway, um, yeah, chucked a, yeah, had, um, what's her face, the archer chick. Okay. Um, show up and just bought her, got her two stars immediately. That's why I got her. Uh huh. And did you say nature archer chick? No, I meant just the archer chick. Oh, like, uh, wind, wind runner? No, the other one. The heartless one. Uh, speeds mean. everyone up. Uh, one gold. She's always been one gold. Anyway. Drow Ranger. Got her two. Drow Ranger, that's it. Yep. Okay. Um, I was thinking completely different direction. Because <laughs> you, fair. I thought you said uh, nature chicken. I'm thinking green. Yeah. Who's green? It has a bow and arrow. I should have said, I should have. I was thinking I should call her, I say, say she's blue, but I didn't. Anyway, yeah. um, that would have, might have been Mirana anyway, so... Yeah. I did eventually get Marana was my tenth. I never I never got any five gold pieces on deck. Um I had yeah. Marana and Drow Ranger by the end. I had a full like six shamans, Lone Druid, Nature's Prophet, the actual tree guy, whatever the fuck his name is. Um you know, he's a tree. The guy is a tree. Tree ant protector. Tree ant protector, that's him. Yeah. I'm a little distracted, uh, sorry. That's fair. Uh, <laughs> Still trying to get these PlayStations going. Right. Um, but yeah, that. anyway, you, uh, yeah. Uh, you you put those all together. Once you get the Black Dragon, the full, like the Shaman, summon, uh, six six Shamans summons a Black Dragon, and it's, it's literally game over. The only thing that I've seen that it's more disgusting uh, than six Shamans is uh, like... You can like you can't do it. It's not as bad as it used to be when like the game first came out. Remember when um, what like the fucking Red Alliance um, Brawny. Okay. Remember Brawny back when the game first came out and it was just like cruise control for victory. Uh, it's no longer that bad, but it can get that bad if you get lucky early on and make sure like if you've only got brutes. Uh, sorry, Brawny's on deck. Early on, and they they are actually getting kills. The problem with brawnies is that they don't get a lot of kills early on. But if you like come into some some teams that aren't doing like have low health, you can like get the kills and fucking rip shit. Yeah, which is pretty rad. Um, that's the only time nothing nothing in the game compares to the black dragon. Otherwise, in my opinion, they're fucking ridiculous. Maybe um uh. A full like the only way to beat it would be to go even harder into summons. I think, hmm. like get your get your own shamans up, and then get the summoner boost. Uh, I think that might be, yeah. But otherwise, you're caught. There's right. no fucking no way, which is good. Uh, so I got a flawless. It was disgusting, uh, but I'll still probably wear my rainbow title instead yeah, uh that's, that's what it. i got yeah 
And I wrote the guide on how to get it. Um, <laughs> Has it got a lot of clicks, that one? Yeah, I think so. I haven't looked in fucking ages. It would no longer be accurate, so... Uh, not that I care, but yeah, it wouldn't be accurate anymore. Um, speaking of games, I play with uh, play on Discord with people. Um, Among Us. Okay, yeah, it's getting a lot uh, of this... uh, a lot of eyeballs. This game. Yes, it is. It's very uh, very popular on Twitch, um, and yeah, I managed to convince uh, some some of uh, the Discord channel to come play some Among Us with us. Uh, cool. it's, a it's a game of social deduction. It's, it's werewolf or mafia or secret Hitler or, you know, one of those games where there's a secret role, a secret trader, and, uh, every game devolves into largely just a shitload of yelling, um, accusations flying everywhere. Oh my God. Doing what you can. Um, so make sure either you stay alive or, uh, you kill the trader. And <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Like it's set on a space station. You do tasks. Uh, once all the tasks are done, uh, the the non traders win. Uh, if the trader kills uh, everyone, then the trader wins, and that's about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it really needs. It can be played with four, but it's not great. Uh, five is fucking fantastic. I'd love to get a ten-player game going, uh, and yeah, basically, uh, yeah, you uh, you do your tasks, or if you're the trader, you kill people. And some of the shit that's happened in this game is out of control. Fucking hilarious. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've been trying to convince you motherfuckers to play these sorts of games for ages. I mean, we played, what was it, the games? Deceit? We all had Deceit. fun in Deceit. Yeah, it's a free that was fucking game. funny. Uh, yeah, and uh, Unfortunate Spaceman is the other one. It seems a bit more similar, aesthetically speaking, uh, to this. That's also free to play. Um, this is 7 bucks 50 so if you're not wild about spending 7 bucks 50 for a game that's going to be dead... Uh, inside of a month, then uh, yeah, bail on it. Um, it's not like particularly well made, in my opinion. It's two years old. Uh, the servers go down constantly. Uh, that kind of thing. You can't get back in if you get booted. Like it's yeah, it's not well made, but it is. I mean, yeah, it's a social deduction game. How hard can it be? Yeah. Uh, T- Town of Salem is another one. Like I, lo- I love those sorts of games. I just I love the fucking idea of them. So why um, why why did this one obviously it was streamers that kicked it up? But is there something yeah. about it that is like that you haven't seen in those types of games, or like what is it? No, no, it's. I think it's it's just a. Uh, I mean, it's slightly more interesting than, say, deceit. Deceit, you're sort of just doing the same things all the time. Like you're always pulling a lever, right? Uh, it's a bit like repairing a generator in um, Dead by Daylight, right? Like, it's not particularly visually interesting to sit there and stare at a fucking generator for, like, two minutes. Um, and this, like, this does some more interesting things. You, like, you got to empty the garbage, and that requires you, like, pulling down a lever, or you play like a Simon Says game to re- restart the reactor or you connect wires by actually like dragging the wires across the screen and stuff like that. Like it's just, yeah, yeah. it's slightly more visually interesting, which I think has helped. Uh, it's got a, it's, you know, it's a pretty goofy art style. Um, and yeah, I, th- I think it is literally just, uh, yeah, streamers got into it and it yeah. sort of took off from there. But um how yeah. how um like friendly or easy is it to kind of pick up? Because I've my biggest issue that I've seen by watching streamers is I literally have no idea what is going on when I'm watching because right. either this person has played way too many hours, like I just don't understand what they're doing. Like there's obviously tasks to be done, but I don't know yeah. how they know where they should be going and yeah, like, what like, order I things are going in. And I guess you might reach a point where you know where everything is on the map. 
Because that's what it seems right. like when I'm watching them. They just, they just go on from A to B really quickly, yeah. and I'm just like, it's not really convenient to me. Because you can see stuff without looking at it, like just by looking at the task list. And it's probably the safest way to do things because then you can keep an eye on your surroundings. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, like, I think it's like, it's, it is easy to work out where the fuck you're supposed to go and what the fuck to do. It's just a case of uh, using the map. And once you know how to use the map, like you, you'd work it out real quick hmm. by playing it. But I think, yeah, you must be watching sweatboards. Um, I think, yeah, I think I am. But is there a tutorial as well? Does it kind of... Is yeah, there somewhere you can fire it up? And, I yeah. I think there is. Um, yeah, it's it's not complicated. Uh, it's, it's fucking funny. Like, real funny. Uh, just some of the shit that goes down. We were playing with, who was it, like, Cleb, uh, J- Johnny Bravo, um, Dr. E3 Money, uh, Heath, and Grey Squirrel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we had this one, like, we had a couple of rounds. Squirrel was the fucking imposter, like, four times in a row or something. Right. Uh, and the... I put up a video of it because uh, it was like the, I, I just wanted to test to make sure I had uh, my video editing software. Premiere was working correctly. And uh, it does. Yay. Uh, but uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> I put up this video and Squirrel's fucking argument for, as to why he wasn't the, the imposter was what are the odds that I'd be the imposter three times in a row? Okay. And it is such a spectacularly, like, it's an idiotic <laughs> argument. And yet, at the same time, it, it, you're like, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. You should really? have known, Job. You've played enough Underlords to know that you can fight the same person three times yeah, in a row. it's true. It's true. Um, I, uh, well, in the next game, in the very next game, we called an immediate boardroom and shot him out into space, and he was the fucking imposter. He <laughs> lost inside of fucking, like, four seconds. It was hilarious. It was the, mm. like, I, I wasn't going to do it either, but Heath's like, nah, just fucking, let's just fucking do it. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, statistically speaking, there's literally no reason why he couldn't be the imposter four times in a row, but holy shit, it just seems... Like, it's just one of those things where you can't get your head around it. And the game, uh, I, I think I put it in our Discord. It was hilarious how hard. So it was, I think this one, I think Johnny Bro had, had bailed at this point. But uh, so it was, I got killed immediately by, by Kevin. Drew watched it happen uh, and tried to argue that, that he'd seen Gavin do it. Cleb and Heath voted Drew out into space or what? Like, just fucking, he, they killed Drew mm. uh, into the pit, into the lava pit. Uh, we we're on the lava pit map. And, uh, yeah, they killed Drew instead of Gavin. And then somehow, somehow, like, Cleb convinced himself that it was Heath, even right. though Heath had never been in the fucking conversation. And he, so Heath voted for Gavin, Gavin voted for Cleb, and Cleb voted for Heath, and that didn't work out. And, like, from there, all Gavin had to do, all Grey Squirrel had to do was fucking, like, step step away and let Cleb and Heath, like, fucking tear each other to shreds, and that was it. Uh, hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. And the game before that, I had basically done what Cleb had done, uh, which was fucked everything up. Um World class, hilarious shit. Uh, but yeah, that, that's that's the fucking that's what those social deduction games are good for. Like that's yeah. why they fucking work, is because at the end of the day, they're just a vessel for idiocy. Yeah, for those panicked moments where you're trying to make quick decisions and then uh, you die. So are you guys using um, in-game voice chat or just through Discord? Uh, through Discord, we've like we've evolved our rule sets. Uh, I, I was playing last night with uh, the third person crew, the Gimpy boys, okay. and uh, 
they have a rule where you're not allowed to talk at all. Uh, but I was very drunk, so I think I was breaking that rule constantly. You're not allowed to talk at all until you're in the in the meeting to determine who is the killer. In the actual game? Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. That's their rule. Uh, we play where you're not you're allowed to say where you are and that someone's with you, but you can't say uh, like any identifying features. You can't say, oh, green's with me or heat's with me or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I think that's a better way, uh, but yeah. Uh, at the same time, we do, like, there is a bit of a, a tendency, especially from me, to just, like, do life checks on everyone. Because as soon as you die, right, it requires, like, it requires players to play to the game. Like, it'd be very easy if I killed you, for you to be like, so oh, Joe just killed me. Yeah. It gives it away. Uh, yeah. Like, there, there is a possibility for that to happen. Um, but we we're all pretty good at not ticking that about. Uh, it is like you listen back to it sometimes and you'll hear someone like cut out mid word, but like there's so much yelling going on <laughs> that you don't really notice that they've just cut out. And then you go back and watch the tape back later and you're like, Oh, that's when they died. <laughs> yeah. Like they start talking like mid sentence cause they died at that time and they were uh, uh, like obeying the rules. Which is cool. Um, I like that shit. But yeah, uh, definitely keen to to play some more. If we play one of the free to play versions, I'm keen for that instead. Unfortunate spaceman or uh, the seat. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's Among Us. It's good yeah. fun. It's um, is it pretty cheap? Seven fifty, I think. Okay. AUD. Yeah. Which is good. Uh, and yeah, um, that's about it. Um, what's the other one? Operation Tango. Okay. Uh, this, this is a demo that's out at the moment. It's sort of a, like a asymmetrical multiplayer, asymmetrical co-op game, uh, where one of you plays a hacker and the other one plays like a infiltrator and, uh, you go in and you get into this vault um and yeah i played with kleb um it's it reminds me a lot of we were here in that like communication is absolutely like a must uh and the trick of the game is um like the i don't know the the challenge of communicating in a, in a way that is effective like uh at one point like you got to work out what the what it is you need to communicate like there's multiple steps to it you got to work out what you need to communicate and then you need to work out the best way to communicate it uh because you don't know what information the other person has mm-hmm. uh so, so you got to like work out what's enough detail what's too much detail what's going to like confuse things that sort of thing which is entertaining uh it's just one of those situations where once you've done it once it sort of loses it's like juice. Like you can only really do that shit once. Right. Uh, so we played through with me as the hacker and, and Cleb as the infiltrator and got through it eventually. Uh, I just like, it was, it wasn't terribly difficult. Like it, we were here, maybe we were here too. Um, had some like moments where like, there's like a hard fail. There's a moment where this, I think I remember telling you, like I was trying to explain the layout of a unfolded cube. I don't know if you remember, but like, yeah, this unfolded cube, because if you fail to like, to describe it accurately, uh, after a certain amount of time, the stairs would fall out from underneath the other person and they would die. Hmm. And that was like, there was mad time pressure and you would wind up in this situation where you're like, quickly, quickly, do it, just fucking do it. And that added a lot to it. Whereas this didn't have that same sort of pressure. There was 
like it was ultimately pretty easy and i think that that needs to change there needs to be a significant ramp up in challenge otherwise yeah it's like when we we switched roles and i uh play as the infiltrator and we finished it in like fucking four minutes like because we knew exactly what to do and it wasn't that big a challenge anymore and the only real benefit of switching roles was to just like basically see from the other what see what the other player could see right to understand their challenge but the challenge wasn't really there and i think that needs to change but otherwise like i like the idea i love like any game that challenges the way that you communicate i think is a good good thing um because it makes you really think about your ability to communicate and Hmm. we should always all always be examining how we communicate with other people like even with games like um, among us where you're you start to learn like people's tells or um the way they sort of behave or the things they say when they're not telling the truth and then so there becomes a matter in the way that you talk to someone as well (laughs) like oh i can't say that anymore like thing um yeah interesting interesting games yeah all right. Is that it Alrighty. for that? Operation Tango? That is, that is Operation Tango, yeah. Okay. Um, the other one I've got here is Surgeon Simulator 2. So uh, this came out last week on Epic Game Store, and I've been playing a bunch of this. Uh, I never actually played the original game, so I don't have any reference to the changes or like what is different. I've just kind of got my experience with the sequel. Um, did you ever play the original at all? Uh, a little bit. I did, like, I didn't find it that, like, I, I found it to be sort of just pretty shallow. Entertaining as a, as a gimmick. Yeah. It was a gimmick and that was about it. And after yeah. the, the gimmick ended, I stopped playing. Right. I was interested in trying it out. And, uh, there's a VR version. Yes. And it, I was interested in checking that out, but again, I mean, I, I, I think it's fucking expensive as shit, and I'm like, well, yeah, I'm paying that price. And, and the, uh, the whole premise around Surgeon Simulator is that it's like a you controlling an arm and trying to grab body parts and work on a patient. Yeah. Like, how does that sort of translate to a VR experience when you've got a lot more control? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that. Works. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't super know. <laughs> sort of feels like it had ruined the, um, the design of the game. Yep. But anyway, uh, so yeah, basically you're this character who you're controlling one arm or one hand. And for example, like one button will move the hand left and right. The other one sort of uh, moves it up and down and you kind of... Uh, another button moves your arm forwards and backwards and so that's kind of what you're controlling as your arm and you're walking around this environment in a first person perspective grabbing items and picking things up and trying to uh, work on this patient who is on an operating table and there's generally like something wrong with them or a body part that you need to replace it's very um cartoonish like over the top sort of style where you know, you use a saw to cut somebody's arm off and then you have to stop the bleeding using a um, specific device that you've got, like a syringe that's a certain color. And then you go and uh, find another syringe that's red and you top them up with blood uh, and then you can go and reattach their arm with uh, another arm at somewhere else. It's that sort of like gimmicky thing where it's not, yeah. you know, surgeon simulator is just like a, a funny name for it. It's not actually a proper simulator game yeah it's not like the ones where you're building a car like a car engine or anything like that um so yeah it's very tongue-in-cheek um i feel like the problem with this game is that at, at its core there's not really a lot going on past the initial like once you kind of figure out the gimmick of it like oh, i need to replace this body part um in this specific way it doesn't really evolve past that like there's not a lot going on in terms of you know there's a there's two lungs and a heart and there's uh ribs on your chest and there's a large intestine and stomach and that's kind of it like there's not really much more to it and arms and legs um 
And so what the game tries, what, what it does is it throws puzzle elements around the environment. And so it's a bit more like you've got to go look for the arm replacement and, and that's hidden somewhere else and you've got to get past this door. And in order to get past that door, you've got to do this other thing. And it's kind of like um, at its basic, you've got this patient you need to work on and remove these body parts and fix them, but also the body parts that you need to fix them with are spread throughout the environment. You've got to go and try and figure out what the puzzle is to get that stuff. And so it becomes pretty, uh, like you kind of figure it out very early on and it's just a matter of getting into each level and being like, all right, what's the, what's the, the problem here that I've got to try and figure out? Like, how do I solve that? Um, and they try and chuck in some challenges in terms of trying to do it in a specific time or trying to do this puzzle without losing a certain amount of blood on the patient. Um, but it, it's kind of just giving you cosmetics. It's not really adding much else to the game as far as I can tell. And so when you kind of just jump in, you, you can really just take your time. You don't have to worry about topping the patient up with blood because at the end of the day, that doesn't really matter for the way that I'm playing it. Um, mm. So it becomes a game of just like trying to figure out the puzzle. And I don't think the, I don't know, like there's not, there's not enough there that is making me think too hard about it. For, for most of the time I can get into a room and be like, oh, okay, I, I kind of know what I need to do. Like there's not a lot like stumping me and making me really scratch my head and about it and, and that sort of stuff, which is kind of disappointing. Like I feel like the game's already showed me everything it's got to offer. Yeah. And I'm just sort of getting into each room and trying to figure out like how to get to the next bit. So um, yeah, that's why I kind of think it's pretty shallow. Like it's got a cool idea, but it never evolves past that idea. It's very one note and samey. And so, yeah, I, like I don't know if I would recommend it to people other than if you've not played the first one and if you feel like, or if you like the first one and it's a game you want to play with friends because it adds Oh, it's got co-op mode in this one. Um, right. And so you can play with other people and have them do specific tasks. But even then, I don't think there's enough tasks for other people to do to sort of get involved. Like if you had four people in here, I don't know what they're all doing. <laughs> like, I don't know what's happening. Uh, Unless there are, um, there's custom levels in the game. You can go and make your own levels and, and uh, play other people's levels and things like that. So unless there is something further down the line where they've got this specific level is designed for four players or two players um that could be interesting but for the single player levels like i just don't understand why you would need four players in there it just seems like it wouldn't add anything to the game um so yeah like i've been i've enjoyed playing parts of it but it's i think it is very like uh it's 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 fine <laughs> like it's not doing i've always heard about this game and yeah it's always talked about a lot and i just kind mm -hmm. of maybe i expected more um yeah from it and maybe that's the problem is that it was this fun little indie game and it kind of got to a point where uh that's maybe where about should should have stopped like it, i don't think it should have been a 30 dollar sequel you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. That seemed a bit too much. So, anyway, yeah, it's it's out now. It's on um, it's on Epic Game Store. Check it out if you want. I don't know. I, I feel like I need someone who's played the original to compare the two, or I yeah. need to go read some reviews and figure out like what has actually changed or what they've done. Um, because yeah. they they're going for this weird like portal esque vibe in the story. Like there's something that's not quite right about this place you're in, and you're trying to discover more about it and figure out what is going on um that's kind of why i'm playing it at this point is to f see what the story evolves into uh but anyway right surgeon simulator 2 there you go weird, weird reason to play a, a surgeon simulator game yeah for the story exactly. <laughs> yep cool. um last one we've got here is mba 2k21 so have you been playing more of this yeah i've played a bit more i've stopped now I think I'm not going to play it anymore. Oh, why's that? Uh, I just, I'm not, I just don't see 
much in it. Right. Uh, it seems like the only way to really improve myself is to play the the online stuff, the neighborhood stuff. Mm. But that never fucking works correctly for me. It never right. fucking works. Um, I like I get into a game, uh, and like I'll finally get into a game. I can't like I can only play the there's like a random matchmaking one. I can't yep. play the, the the games where you're walking around the pickup games. Yeah, in the name. I can only yeah. I can't play those. I can only play the random matchmaking one. Okay. Nobody will ever play with me, even though like you can see like they've got they've got their placards that show their their fame or whatever. See see how much rep they've got from playing multiplayer, and I've got the basic one because I've earned no rep at all because I can't fucking play a game but you can also see their stats and like most of the time I, my dudes like got 80, 85 overall and most of the time you can see like these guys got like 65 or 70 or something so my my player is definitely better than them but they won't join me because I don't have any rep and I can't get any rep because every time I try to play the the random one hmm. the it crashes like every single fucking time. I've tried like five fucking times yeah. and it'll crash every single fucking time before I finish the game and I get no fucking, like nothing out of it. It's just time wasted. Uh, and yeah, so I'm like, well, okay. So that's dead to me. That's pointless. Um, so I can't play online. And I'm not finding the regular games all that interesting. Uh, I've, I've found that uh, I have absolutely no problem, uh, like doing whatever the fuck I want in a game. The only way that I'm, I'm still on the heat, I've played 22 games now or something. Uh, I've been, my, my, my player has been like player of the week. Uh, yeah. Like beast the last like four weeks in a row. Uh, mostly because I am averaging a triple double. Uh, and like nonstop A pluses, I basically I can Westbrook it up. Like I can basically do whatever the fuck I want. Like, hmm. oh, I need two more rebounds to get my triple double. Then I will just get rebounds. Uh, I need two more assists. Yep. Welcome to the fucking assist zone. Oh, I've got my I've got my double double in assists and rebounds. Well, I guess it's time to score as many points as humanly possible. And I I do that. I mean, I up the time to twelve minutes per quarter, because yep. um, I don't know why the fuck wouldn't you? And because uh, it's normally it was like four minutes or five minutes. I think it started at five, yeah. yeah. And yeah, like especially when you're just starting out, you don't get enough minutes, right? Like it's I think it's not directly prorated to the amount of time you would get if it was twelve, but. Mm. You still don't get a lot of time to play, uh, and so it's hard to put stats up on the board. Sure, yeah. Uh, but upping it to twelve, you might only play like fucking, I don't know, four minutes uh, out of a quarter, but you can still you can still get a Do lot stuff. of fucking points out of that, and that yeah. is enough to earn you more time. And then you eventually get to a point where you're playing like fucking. 35 minutes a game uh, and putting up fucking Kobe numbers and you're like, yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. That works. Um, but yeah, I can do like, I don't know, the AI, I've, I bumped it up to um, All-Star. Okay. Uh, which has ruined my, I can't, I can't hit a mid-range shot now. I cannot do it. It's got that it's got that new thing. I can't turn it off at the All Star. Uh, but it's the only way to get AI that like is even remotely challenging. Yeah. And it's still not challenging. I can still set a pick at the top of the fucking key and then get infinity fucking assists. Uh fucking Kelly Oli Oli Olinak, how the fuck you say Olinic, his name? Yeah. Yeah, Olinic. Uh Olinic. is is like maybe the fucking he might go for fucking scoring champion this year. <laughs> yeah. 
Because, yeah, I get him, I hold L1, set the pick at the top of the fucking key, and then I just pass it to him when, when I let go of the L1 button, and he goes and dunks every single time. Or the reverse is, I do that. I set the fucking pick at the top of the key, and then I run towards the fucking hoop, and I score. I can score at will without any problem, provided I am within like 40 centimeters of the fucking hoop. Mm. And if I'm any further away, I will miss everything. Except for free throws. I don't understand what's going on with free throws. Free throws in that game. <laughs> but like I've never like the the NBA has never had a better time. The, it's never been this this hot. I like fucking Shaq would be hitting his free throws in NBA 2K21. Like it is everyone's hundred percent. Nobody misses any three free throws ever. There is Absolutely, like, you know, like, there's half a reason to foul someone if, if you've got fouls to give and and it's a close game and they're underneath going for a layup, you may as well foul them because they might miss one. It's statistically sure. yeah. better because they're not going to miss a fucking layup, but yeah, they might miss a fucking free throw. No, they're not going to miss a free throw. It's the same as fucking, you may as well just let them get the layup and save your player rating the, the hit for getting a foul. Um, remember you used to get a player rating boost for a good foul? That doesn't happen. You just you just take shit. But it doesn't matter because most of the time by the fourth quarter, my character is so far in A plus that I can get Do like, something bad. Yeah, I can turn over like twice in a row, and I it still hasn't actually dropped below A plus. Yeah, like yeah, yeah it's like it's just it. It's it feels the same like they've made it now. easier. Yeah. It's so like the AI just isn't there to compete. Uh, it needs to learn, right? There has to be some something to make it learn that hey, Job is going to set a fucking is going to do the same pick and roll. It's not even a roll. It's not even a cut. Kelly Olenek like fucking lumbers his way towards the fucking hoop, like he's a fucking Frankenstein monster, and like still managed, still nobody can fucking stop him. Or yeah, the other the other thing is if I can get a switch, I, I if if I want to make things marginally harder on myself, uh, I'll set the I'll set the pick so that I switch onto literally anyone who isn't a power forward or a center, and it is one hundred percent every single time. I've got like some badge that increases my chances of hitting shots. Contact finisher, I think it's called. Yeah. Uh, and it increase if I if I'm like if there is contact with someone else, I will finish that sh- like finish the layout as again as long as I'm within fucking twelve microns of the fucking hoop. But still, yeah, it doesn't matter. Like yeah, it's it's way too easy, uh, and that's on all star, and that's accounting for the fact like I'm still putting up forty point triple doubles every fucking game uh, as a rookie against. The only team I lost to was the Warriors because everyone's apparently healthy on the Warriors and uh, we can't, like, they're not missing th- three points, shots. They're not missing their shots. They're hitting everything. So it doesn't matter if I put up a 40-point triple-double uh, and Colley- Kelly and Linux is, is getting fucking, like, 80 points a game because I keep fucking passing to him while he's, in the, like, standing underneath the fucking hoop with nobody mm-hmm. doing anything to him. It doesn't matter. Right, because they keep hitting fucking threes every time they sprint back down the fucking court, and apparently my teammates can't do anything. Like they're exploiting the AI as hard as I am, evidently, and they are AI, which is kind of scary. That's a scary implication, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, like this, there's no challenge. The only challenge would be working out how the fuck to stop uh, all of the warriors as just one person, and I'm just not right. able to do it. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, I do anyway. feel like it's um, it's easier this year for some reason. Well, at least the the gameplay part, like earning your ratings and things like that, feels easier. Um, obviously, the the change to the shooting stick has made things harder for those people. Um, because that thing, I still can't, I still struggle with that. Like it's it's the, I I changed it so the shooting stick um the old style shooting stick is back. So they put right. a patch up the other day that brings the old shooting stick style back. Um, but the, the shot aim stick, I, I can't, 
like I struggle with that so hard. It's 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 a thing where you've got to like really focus on that meter and like flick it in the right direction. And um, I'm not that hardcore at that stage, so I'm more than happy to use the old school style shooting stick for things that I want to use that with. But uh, yeah, I've definitely found it to be a lot easier this year. Um, so uh, unless I'm just getting better at the game, I don't I don't know. But I'm doing like last night i finally got my 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 trade went off uh i think i'm i was 13 games in um on the bucks i uh, was earned a starting spot on that yep. i got my trade through to the lakers and my first game with them i got a triple double in like nearly the first half um, <laughs> and yep. i think i finished on like a 45 point triple double by the end of the game LeBron had two points. <laughs> <laughs> Le washed. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know why he's on this team anymore. It doesn't make any sense. Why should he be here? No. Uh, he was he he had like 10 assists or something like that. Um, I feel bad for the Bucs. They got Danny Green in this trade. Uh, you were joking. <laughs> <laughs> good Lord. Yeah. So it's... it's um. It's not good. Not good for them. I feel fine. I'm doing all right. Yeah, actually, Danny Green would actually be like if it wasn't a trade for your my player character, that'd actually be pretty good for the Bucks. Like in the real world, because then they'd have they'd have Chris Middleton. I assume they still got Chris Middleton. They'd have uh, Giannis. Like, mm-hmm. like that would be basically basically all they'd need. They would be a proper fucking... Because they, what they needed in these playoffs was more outside threats that weren't Chris Middleton because they just kept, like, smothering him. Sure. And, and yeah, and so, yeah, they just weren't able to to get their points up. That'd be yeah. pretty good. But yeah, not for a dude who's doing 45 points <laughs> Yeah, and like I nearly had it in the first quarter. I was like two <laughs> assists away, or two rebounds yeah. away from the triple double. Uh, and at that stage, I think it was like three quarters in, and LeBron had zero shots. And I was all right, fair enough. Um, but I got the I got the uh, face scan app to work on my. I used my iPhone. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. it took me one go. <laughs> it got up there. Um. Uh, and I decided to go with the uh, the lockdown beard. So I just chucked like a lockdown beard on my dude and was like, done. This 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 is a good fit for this year. I think it nice. turned out turned out pretty good. And um, the other thing was I wanted to offer a correction for last week. I said that one thing I felt the game was missing was that sort of in in between season banter that you get of like. Uh, trades that have happened off season or like yep. players moving or things that are happening to teams. Uh, and at that specific, at that specific stage, I hadn't really heard any of that stuff, but it is in the game. They talk about stuff that's happened with Kobe or the, uh, the stuff that's happened with the, the, the COVID and situation yeah. and how that's affected the game. Um, so they are referencing in season stuff that's happened during mm-hmm. this time. Uh, but they also reference like stuff that haven't happened yet at that stage. They were talking about the Clippers being knocked out in my game. Did you record that? You didn't record I, it, did you? I recorded it, but 2K doesn't this- record game audio for some reason. And I don't know if that's because of the music that's happening in the background. Right. That is, I'm so gutted. That yeah. is the fucking <clears throat> funniest shit. Because this was. I sent it to you guys last, I don't know, it was a couple of days ago. I was like, they were just commenting about like how the Clippers were the favorites and they got knocked out last season, which is yeah. this game is set in the, in next year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And at that stage, the Clippers hadn't been knocked out <laughs> yet for real, yeah. but we were laughing and, about it. And, and they didn't look like they were going to be knocked out either. They shouldn't have been knocked out. Good God. Yeah. Good God. What a fucking, what a collapse. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm really digging the game. I have a lot of fun with it this year. The yeah. I, I played some uh some court time on the neighborhood. Um, oh, you actually get you get to play court time. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I I um 
I, I jumped into a game and it was like the team that was on the court was on like a three game streak. We came oh, up yeah. and we beat them by two points. So that felt pretty good. Nice. And then we disbanded, you know, 100% win rate for that team. Perfect. Um, yep. But yeah, I've, I've just had fun running around and checking out different courts. And I went down to the cages and had a look down there last night. And uh, that is interesting. That's the ones where there's the uh, trampoline. Like, yeah, like jump pads and trampolines. Um, yeah. That stuff is cool. Uh, I, I uh, yeah, I'm just, I, I, fire it up every night now like that is the game i'm playing at night for the last couple of weeks or well, since since i got mm-hmm. a code I, I sort of jump in and i'll play um two usually two games and that'll knock me out for like two two hours because it takes some time to get through a game you, you've got your on court time because i also i play as the full quarters like i bump it up with 12 yeah. minutes uh yeah. and then on top of that you've got your team practice and that can take 20 20 minutes sometimes um yeah. So by the time I knock out like two of those two games, do you, uh, do you get to dictate what? Yeah. Team practice you do. Yeah. I do. Sense. I do free throw golf because that is hard, uh, but I usually beat that. Um, yeah. Because I've maxed out my defense and playmaking, and I'm doing my shooting and finishing stick skills. And the yeah. other one I do is pick and roll. Um, that one's an easy one, but. I can get it done in like th- three or four goes. It's super easy. Yeah. So I do the alley alley one. Right. Uh, My dude ain't really a dunker. He's yeah, right. He's I've got a- very boring dunks because you got to buy dunks, and obviously all that money's going to stats, not fucking dunks. Yeah. Uh, so I just do. My dude just does like uh, uh, the bobin fucking reach up. Just crazy. uh, yeah, but um, yeah, like otherwise. Like it's it's well yeah I've got the most potential badges in finishing so uh, and I find that one easy to three star so I'm, okay I just do that one to max out the fucking points but I mm. do free throw golf as well it's the only way I can actually up my shooting because <laughs> uh, I can't hit any other shots I do that one where uh, they pass the ball to you at the top of the key and you're supposed to hit it no nah, no nah, never gonna happen yeah. not fucking happening. Um, just won't stop bricks. But I'm yeah, I'm I'm enjoying that game a lot. It's like I said, right now it's my go-to n- nighttime game. Like I'll jump in at like eleven o'clock at night, bash out a couple yeah. games, and and then go to bed. Um, so it's it's fun. I, I like the new uh, dribbling stick. How they've sort of changed it, so you can now use the right analog to to move around as well you get sort of more control while moving i feel like um because they like i said last week with the shot stick it used to be you point it in a direction and that sort of initiated what type of shot they've got but now you pull down and then yeah sort of swing it in what direction you want to go which gives you uh the same sort of stuff but also you got more control over dribbling now because that's on the left and right movement um so yeah, I don't know, man. I'm I'm liking it a lot. They are obviously listening to community feedback. They implemented that patch the other day that put in the old style shot stick back in, which is what I'm using yeah. now, um, which is good. They've tweaked the shot aiming stick, which is what all the pros are using. Um, I, I'm I'm having fun with it. I'm really keen to see what this next gen game looks like because uh, we still we still haven't seen it at this stage, yeah. and that's uh it's going to be. Obviously, it has to be a launch game, right? Because I think it has to be a launch game. Have they said that yet? I don't know. know. There's going to be an upgrade, but uh, mm. I'm I'm digging it a lot. I'm I'm enjoying it very muchly. So I'm I'm sure I'll keep talking about that one. I'm keen to see where the Lakers go. The Bucks were on a 14 and one win streak. I think I lost my first oh, yeah. game, and that was the game right. I played. Like I don't know five minutes or something like that <laughs> like yeah, something yeah. really bad and then we went on like a 14 game win streak i got traded and they lost the next game <laughs> yeah they forgot uh, how to play yeah. basketball. The heat, when uh when i first joined the team and i was only playing small minutes the heat lost game after game after game which is obviously not how things are going in real life <laughs> um mm. in, in real life goran dragic can actually make shots uh, in NBA 2K21, 
he might be the worst shooter the world has ever seen. He's yeah. He might be worse than my guy at the mid-range jump shot. It's hard to tell, but every time I pass it to him, it is Brick City. Uh, yeah, my, in real life, he's quite well. My favorite thing is everybody leaves Rondo open. Oh, yeah. He nails everything. It's like real life. Bro. <laughs> he just sinks every shot. It's so good. <laughs> I'm like, why are they leaving Rondo over it again? I'd pass. He's like standing in the corner. I just, he just smashes it every single time. I think the first game that I played last night with him, he, I think he got six threes, uh, and he hit, he missed like two or something like that. Just disgusting. That's awesome. Yeah. Um. Anyway, who who are you thinking? Who who's winning the the basketball? Who's your money on? You- uh, Lakers. Are you kidding? Oh my lord. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure while the Clippers were still in because that was the one team I was <laughs> like, oh. they, were, they were a good matchup for the Lakers. Like, theoretically, uh, they've they I think they had the tools required, uh, but uh, yeah, I just don't I, see anybody beating them anymore. No, I mean, uh, like, I just I don't see what the Nuggets can do. Like, they they get locked down, right? Like, they don't have enough options outside of Jamal and the Joker. Like, what 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 can they do? Yeah, they need a they need, they, they need a fucking third person. They need someone that is a proper fucking threat on the outside because otherwise, like, there's there's too many. I think Drew was saying, and it's one hundred percent true. The Lakers have too many fucking bigs. I think they, the Lakers oh, defense okay. is too good. Like nobody's yeah. gonna stop him. You stick like you've got Javale or AD on like Joker, and then off the bench Dwight. you've got you've yeah. got Dwight <laughs> off the bench just or Kuzma. You just keep banging him up, man. Onto him, yeah, and yeah, like he was already playing a lot of minutes. Like yeah, at any point, the moment Joker's in, you just put someone huge on him, mm-hmm. and then when they start to tire at all, you put someone else huge on him. And, and that dude is, gets gassed. Like he yeah, always exactly. looks like he's gassed. He, that, that's 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 his that's his secret power is that he always looks really fucking tired. So you can't tell exactly when he's tired. Like yeah. I think his stamina meter's drained, but I can't can't he be needs sure. That Gatorade. He needs that Gatorade. Gatorade is what they drink during the timeout. So you got to stay hydrated. Fuck that shit's obnoxious. Um. Yeah. Anyway. All right, that's NBA 2K21. Um, any other games you want to bring up while we're here? Uh, uh, no, I don't think no. so. That's about it. All right, so we wrap up with some news quickly. The rest of the news. The no Oculus questions. Quest 2 is releasing in October for 299 US. I haven't, I couldn't find an Australian price for anyone that's listed right. yet. I don't think they've... Uh, so I've actually got the, the Australian price. It's, uh, it is... Uh, Fuck Facebook amount of dollars. <laughs> right. Fuck Facebook is actually the correct amount uh, that you're looking for there. My, my notes are wrong. Um, yep. So it's $100 cheaper than the original Quest. Um, it's, I think it's it's not as good as Rift, but it's got, it's I think it's got a little bit more RAM. Uh, the visual fidelity is a bit better than the, the, uh, than the, the original Oculus. Um, some interesting notes coming out of this. The uh, they've said that the company is no longer going to be supporting PC only VR hardware. Um, so going forward, they're going to be focusing on this wireless uh, Oculus technology, um, but instead they'll be using the Oculus Link. So that's the cable that goes from the headset device into the back of the PC, and then you yeah. can use the um, your VR so- software to, to do that. So I don't know if that means like we're going to see less powerful devices coming from them or if there's going to i don't really know specifically how the link works but if you'll be able to draw power from like your pc and run the games and just have it the device be sort of like the input and the output or if it's just purely your oculus is going to be powering games from now on and that's how they're going to work um i think i know how it will work it will work by (laughs) fuck facebook click (laughs) fuck facebook Uh, is that because you need a facebook account don't buy the Quest. They're dog shit cunts. What are you doing? I never got into you about buying fucking Oculus. I They're never good. got into you, but I should have. Uh, well, fucking, I should have bought you, the, the, the $3,000 HTC 
Uh, I'm sorry that fucking not supporting the evil empire costs a little bit more, but uh, that apparently is the price of your soul. Okay? That's the price of your soul, Luke. And you sold it. You sold it away. You sold it all down the river. I was trying to watch the fucking basketball from that fucking sideline camp because I thought that'd be cool. Yeah. And you can't do it because it's locked on Oculus software. Yeah. Uh, like, even you couldn't do it with a Rift. Right. Like, it's locked from the Rift. They've got exclusive shit that's exclusive outside of their own, like, inside of their own e- ecosystem. It'd be like, I don't fucking know. If that's they released it, like I'd always hack it. Yeah, fuck yeah, I'd hack it. Fuck yeah, I would. Because fuck them. They shouldn't have fucking closed off their garden, the fucking pricks. The only game that I've ever bought from the Oculus store is fucking that stupid canoeing game. Right. So fuck them even harder for that. But you've got an account. There you go. Yeah, well, I've got a Facebook account, don't I? Yeah. Most people do. Um, it's true. Some more VR news coming out of this. Uh, Assassin's Creed and Splinter Cell will be getting games uh, built for VR by Red Storm, uh, who were the creators of Star Trek Bridge Crew. Right. Do you reckon Splinter Cell will have like some thing where you you have to lower the goggles onto your face, like Sam's goggles? Mm. You know, you got to lower the VR kit onto your face, like the fucking Probably not night vision goggles to no? get it started. Yeah, or something. You know, you got to do. They got to do something with that concept. They can't let that go. But isn't it a bunch either. of like? grabbing and then hitting the top of your visor every single time you do it yeah like wouldn't people be doing that a lot so people that are uncoordinated like nate who bangs his controllers together all the time (laughs) true (laughs) i think it wasn't synced well um (laughs) but yeah uh this is oculus exclusive as well so uh hey I'm fine. Fuck I'm set fate. Up. I'm set up. You're, you're, you're well sorted. <laughs> yeah. And Thank fuck you everyone else. Very much. Um, Rocket League is going free to play next week. And in doing that, it'll also be delisted from Steam. Um, so this will be on the Epic Game Store, obviously. Uh, if you've still got it on Steam, it's not going to disappear. Um, and obviously on consoles, it will stay exactly the same. Hmm. Good move. Um, Obviously, they're not selling as much as what they were, so they're going free to play. Focus on cosmetics, probably the right move. Uh, I guess Rocket League's still pretty big, right? A lot of people still playing that. Uh, yeah, like hard to tell exactly how many people, but uh, it's still a, a big time. Like people fucking love that game. If there was an Olympics, there'd be fucking Rocket Leaguers at the Olympics. Bet there ain't. Uh, true. That's, right. that's, that's a real bummer. But yeah. Next up, we've got uh, NVIDIA has purchased ARM, an ARM, no leg, but um, tish, uh, for $40 billion. ARM is a um, a chip manufacturer. Microprocessor, yeah. Yeah, who works a lot in uh, mobile devices. And chances are that most mobile devices have some sort of ARM design built into yep. them. Um, so they're a very big company. Mm. Looks like they're doing this to focus a lot more on, I guess, getting a lot of these chips um, for graphical and AI purposes. They're saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I've been I've been talking about this for a while. That I think that like Nvidia's AI tech is where graphics technology is going. Just the things they're doing out of that, and yeah. this sort of aligns or looks like something that would allow them to do more in that, getting small mobile chips and being able to put them on other devices and sort of incorporate them on their hardware uh, seems like a a smart move from them. Uh, yeah, like, uh, I mean, $40 billion is is a lot of fucking money. That's a lot of cheddar. But, uh, like, if, yeah, I guess they got to do something to invest in their future. Uh I, I I would I would be interested to see what this results in. Maybe we see another like some shields and stuff again. Maybe they make 
a resurgence. So they still exist and they're very popular. Uh, yeah. Nate swears by his, um, <clears throat> but yeah, they haven't done anything with it for a little while. So yeah, yeah. I've always thought about it, but I think my PC might be a bit too far from my TV. Um, right. Like if for whatever reason I could get something set up in our lounge room, then yep. maybe I'd do it. It's for those games that I'm like, I want to have like HDR. And uh, if I can do that, I don't know. I haven't really looked yeah. into it. But being able to sit on my couch and stream that sort of stuff would be cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Next up, we got PUBG has added a bunch of new items in patch 8.2. Uh, decoy grenades, new LMG. Um, they've made some UI quality of life changes, things with like uh, weapon select. Um, They've also done some things with reskinning uh, weapon models, um, changing locations on the map. So Aaron Gold got a bit of a little bit of a tweak. Um, but the big right. one I think in here is a new item called the Jammer Pack, which will allow you to go outside of the blue zone and uh, not take any damage. Uh, yeah. How many points out of ten is this a terrible idea, Job? 10 being it is uh, fucking most. 11. <laughs> it is an 11 because holy shit. The blue zone doesn't do enough damage for fucking ages as it is. Uh, like it's already bad enough that you can eat blue zone damage for as long as you can in that game. To give people the ability to actively head out into the blue Late yeah. game, it's just <clears throat> awful. Um, it, it's a bit, I guess, like the gas mask in Cold Warzone. Is that that's this update is the hey, we're we're more like Warzone now, right? Mm. Like gas mask uh, is the blue zone. Uh, decoy grenades, that's in Warzone. New LNG, we got loads of LNGs. That's not really Warzone, but uh, like, but, but the but the the mask isn't necessarily used for going. Like out. No, it doesn't last long enough. It is literally you cop so much shit know. being out in the fucking in her uh gas in Warzone that like you get a you get a mask just for the the sheer fact that if you accidentally get caught out, you're probably gonna die to the gas. Like yeah, yeah you fucking Yeah. You need a gas mask if you can find one, just because you get fucked so hard by the gas in that game, at pretty much every level, like every stage of the game. Yeah. Uh, no, that shit's that's dumb. The uh, and doesn't it take up the backpack slot? So what are you gonna do? It will take up. No, it gives you a level. I think it's level three backpack. It uses less room. Um, uh, but once it runs out, I think it gives you the full range of that room um oh, it's, okay. al it's also sorry this is patch 8.3 i said 8.2 um and the stuff that i talked about was in 8.2 this one is adding ferries to to Arangal. did you see this no so there'll be ferries that transport you from location to location uh it's sort of like set set piers on the map uh which go backwards and forwards between the the two spots um right and then the jammer pack I can't see here how long it sort of allows you to stay outside the zone. It, it doesn't have a a number here. It just sort of says like short time. <laughs> um, right. But I mean, it's there now. Yikes. Uh, yeah, okay. They've added an assist. I, I guess ferries isn't a terrible idea. Uh, they do need some way to stop Mill Mil Waste Island from being such a fucking nightmare. Um I was watching a bit of bit of competitive PUBG. I still really like competitive PUBG as a viewing experience. Um but yeah, uh, I I absolutely will not play it again. Mm. Um until they make a sequel or some shit. Um uh yeah no I was watching some of the what was it like the PCS APAC or whatever the fuck it was called. Um yep. Liam was uh, pimping it. Uh, yeah, PCS APAC. It was fucking... It's good. It's not up on our Discord. Uh, the last game was a fucking ripper. It was very entertaining. Uh, and like a real nail-biter. Nail 
like right right down to the wire, which is pretty good. Definitely mm. worth a watch if you want to watch some competitive PUBG. Right. Uh, and yeah, check that shit out. But yeah, otherwise, yeah. Uh, PUBG's dead to me as a game that I play. So when <laughs> we should have bets of like when you're gonna install this again at some stage. Oh, There's yeah. got to be oh, a, yeah. a date where they do something. To get me back in, yeah. I don't, I don't know like, what it could be. They delete the bots, or <laughs> <laughs> that'd be a good, that'd be a good start. Yeah. Um. Uh, I yeah. feel like that game is yeah. I uh, it's I um, I like pooping on it. um, but it's got to be at its lowest. I think the last time I checked, it was like two hundred thousand active users, which is still a lot. That's still uh, a lot, yeah. But yeah. It's uh, it's not as much as what it used to be, like uh, June around about June or July twenty seventeen, uh, is where its active players count was, and um, that was yeah. three months into the game's early access. Yeah, which is pretty low. Average players one hundred seventy seven thousand right now. Right in a month, it's yeah. Considering they were at. Uh, 1.5 million the, mm-hmm. the, the year the they height. released. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, and the last piece of news here we've got this is a juicy one. Uh, Twitch has started testing mid roll ads. So during streams, generally when you watch a stream, you'll get a, a pre roll ad that starts before you, you watch it. Could be 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, and then you get into the content creator's feed and you start watching. Uh, mid-roll ads will be ads where, without warning, they will just roll automatically for the audience watching um, without the control of the creator, unless they have run an ad recently. So yeah. they've done something about it. This becomes a problem, uh, which was highlighted today when people were watching the Sony PlayStation conference and uh, mid-roll ads were playing. It didn't happen to me. But I'd retweeted, retweeted uh, one that happened to somebody where they were watching uh, and they were live streaming at the time. And uh, <laughs> they got an ad during the middle of that conference. <sighs> like, what are they doing? Why would they do this to themselves? This is... This is... It's like, how do you not see that this is bad? Mm. Right? Like, Twitch is a platform that lives and dies on like from the moments those moments are everything that twitch is is about yeah you know like oh my god what what the fuck that's crazy it is bananas i understand right that they have to make money Right, it is a business. They got to run the service somehow. Uh, yeah, like they have to make money. I totally understand that. This though does not seem like, yeah. in my opinion, it should be something like I think I saw uh, someone on Twitter said something like, uh, "You build up a bank of ads." And like, and then they play. Sure. Uh, and and something you might have to watch a couple of ads back to back if you want. But like, I think that would be good. Although you know, it's it's probably a bit too easy for people to just fucking quit. Hmm. Uh, but if the bank of ads remains, then do it to it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. If if that's like that would be better than this. Uh. Or. Yeah. Like, it, it is just crazy. I mean, I, I know that, yep. The Twitch is making money. Like, I have yep. a theory that Twitch is making money and, and, and making more money is probably not a problem considering what Jeff Bezos, yeah. was $200 million, sorry, $200 billion, uh, yeah. which he's like, what, did he double his net worth or something? In That's a couple like of five months? arms. You can have That's five arms. Five of those, yeah. I don't think money's a problem for them. No, I think that that's a good point. Yeah. Well, you think they don't I mean. have enough money? They want more. Uh, 
They want more money. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff Bezos is like, we're hitting 300 by the end of the end of the year. What do we got? I don't have 300 motherfuckers. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what's happening. I want fucking more arms. I want eight <laughs> arms, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Jeff Octo Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Anyway, Good point. Done. Hopefully uh, they don't terrible, do this. Terrible idea. Yeah. They say they're testing it. Um, stop testing. Roll mm. it back. Roll back your ads. Find a better way to do it. Um, yeah. And that is it. That is the cool. news. Uh, I think we've got a question because it was highlighted before when I saw it. Uh, I had the I had the little ping and it looks like we got a couple of questions. Oh yeah. So let's do it. Fridge Monster Man writes, Hi Job, hi Luke. Autocorrect thought I meant hi jo- Jose. Uh, and I'm glad I caught it before you read it out. Uh, I would have been okay with Jose, to be honest. There's that there's that Twitter thing, I don't know if you saw it, everyone was like listing their like ranking yeah. names that they get called by and like giving ratings to them. Mm. And uh I, re- I didn't do it. I didn't participate, but I did think to myself, I would pretty much just whatever. It'd, be, it'd all be about an eight out of 10. Just call me whatever the fuck. As long as you make eye contact with me, it doesn't really matter what you say to me. As long as I know you're addressing me, it's fine. Cause I'm pretty, pretty used to being called the wrong thing. Doesn't, yeah. doesn't functionally matter. What do you, what, what's your favorite nickname, Luke? Do you like Lukey? Lucas? Luke Tron? Uh, LL Cool J. Uh, These are all first timers. I, uh, oh, okay. I definitely call you Leaky. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> fuck you and fuck Facebook. Um, when I was maybe eight, ten years old, my uncle built a Pentium 3 Win 98 SE box. And I was seriously impressed because I thought building your own computer meant hand assembling everything yourself. <laughs> You know, soldering resistors and capacitors onto the motherboard, that sort of thing. What's a misconception you had about computers as, as a kid? Luke, any misconceptions about computers as a kid? Mm. Or did you not have them because you are a robot and as such have Correct. all the computer parts already built in? Cool. Um, um, I feel like the the one that I can think of off the top of my head is the turbo button actually did something. I don't think it did. <laughs> I don't think that server button did anything. I'm still not sure if it did. <laughs> Other than change the LED from high to low. Um, uh, what about pushing pushing the disc tray in? Uh, I remember somebody told me that if you push the disc tray in instead of pressing the button, the door would fail and the disc would fly out like a ninja star and it would kill you. And someone had died from that. And I believe that for a long time. <laughs> That's, that is somebody who has who has spent a lot of money on a computer, and yeah. uh, and their kid is doing that, and they've made up a thing, and it's sort of just spread around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. It just got out of control. Yeah. Like it's like, one of those white lies the parent yeah, tells. Like, don't pee in the pool; it'll turn. It'll yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Now, when I pee in the pool, I always like look. I do a little bit of pee. And then I'm like, is it changing color? Okay, I'm good. And then I just pee. I'm safe. <laughs> um, yeah, good question. Good question. Uh, Baz writes, in a recent episode, you were criticizing physical copies of games. I have purchased consoles in the past for this specific reason. You may have overlooked a couple of things. The ability to sell a game once you have finished it or no longer played it, especially single player games that have a short turnaround. Uh, you might lose about 15 bucks, uh, but it is better than losing the full amount on PC. Most places, most notably EB Games, will let you return a physical copy of a game within seven days just because you don't like it. Probably more directed at youngins, and something I definitely did as a kid was trade games with friends, or we would purchase different games knowing that once we finished, we would trade. And one that no longer exists, sadly, as ca- uh, a casualty when streaming companies came along and took the likes of Video Easy out of business. Renting three games for $7 was great. Seems demos for games have also disappeared. Hopefully more companies start to work like Microsoft and adopt a subscription-based model to play a wide variety of games. Anyways, thoughts? Uh, just barely scraping uh, under the, uh, over the, under the bar? Over the bar? I don't know, scraping through the door 
uh, to qualify as a question, Baz. But uh, no, that is a really strong point. And it's actually something someone brought up with me, which is why I uh, I railed so hard against the Dislis earlier in this episode. Hmm. Uh, um, yeah, like you are 100% correct. Like, I think it's very easy for me uh, and, and Luke. Oh, I don't know about Luke. I'm not going to speak on Luke's behalf. But it's very easy for me to forget uh to like my my game acquisition experience is different to other people's and so i place a different value on mm-hmm. uh the reality of, of physical or, or, or like uh um, download only games because yeah i've got yeah my personal value of them is is different i've got like it was uh council cleanup the other weekend mm-hmm. and uh i had there was a box in my uh garage what's in the that box that i went what well it was about 400 fucking xbox games right. <laughs> like that like all garbage i've kept all the really good ones <laughs> but yeah. like get, like just turn shit and i can't sell them uh because that feels yeah, ethically promo copies. Yeah, uh, yeah, it feels ethically wrong. Um, so I just, you know, I, I'm not going to carry them around forever. Um, and yeah, so like I've got a completely different uh, concept of value for games. Uh, and so yeah, no, it's just it's a really good point, and it's hard. Like it's one of those things that I think critics do would do well to be gut checked on more often. Is there relationship to game acquisition because yeah uh it's very easy to forget sometimes and yeah when you forget yeah you you may not your your experience doesn't necessarily reflect that of other people's but yeah 100 percent um correct on that and yeah physical copies of games absolutely still have value in that sense um so yeah good point yeah, I um I I like physical copies. I um yeah. and we're at a place now as well where uh one thing we didn't touch on before, like data limits for internet providers. Like yeah. if we go all digital and we're talking about games like uh Call of Duty Warzone or uh Blackout, sorry not Blackout, Black Ops, like the new Call of Duty. We don't know how big that game is, but Modern Warfare is like a two hundred and twenty gig download. And then they're doing like 50, 60 gigabyte updates every month. That's a lot. Mm. And then you you start doing that with multiple games. Um, like we installed a game this week we can't talk about yet. And it was 60 gigabytes. I didn't expect to be that big, but it sort of adds up over time. Um, yeah. I, I'm on a data plan. I'm not on unlimited data um, where I am. I'm in the US. A lot of places, a lot of uh, places in the US have data caps now. Um, yeah. A lot of places in uh, Australia have data caps. Um, yep. It's not I'm something. Yeah. I mean, they say unlimited, but you get to a point um, sometimes and they're like, all right, we're going to throttle you. Or mm-hmm. once you go past, uh, I think mine is 1.2 terabytes. Then they start, right. you know, they can charge you per 50 gigabytes, something like that. Like there are yeah. unlimited plans and so, some of them are actually unlimited. Um, but the majority of them are unlimited with a catch there's some yeah sort of fine print in there so that's a problem really right? super loop and aussie broadband are confirmed as true unlimited just for aussie uh yeah aussie listeners uh, i don't know how it goes in america but yeah uh, i'm on super loop and i know aussie does true unlimited. right so, yeah. um so yeah i don't know i like i like the physical stuff i like having blu-rays and 4k movies and being able to that might change at some stage when I've got too fucking many, but at this stage, <laughs> like I like the the physical. I mean, you can see well. in the background you've got a bunch. Like you can see you got a bookshelf shelf full of fucking games and shit. And that's um, only that wouldn't. Yeah, that'd be just three, a fraction. PlayStation yeah. Four um, <laughs> and Xbox Three Sixty. There's some PC stuff I've got there that is now. I mean, it ain't. It ain't. Uh, I don't really know if you can see stuff. in the back. You can sort of see in the background of mine. 
yeah above my head now yeah i can't tell because you've got your, my your pole dancing lights on it's very yeah. moody that's my uh that's my <laughs> plant light okay plants need purple light it turns out they love purple light yeah i did not know this uh but yeah and, and also the, the the whole like i want to play a game now and not when it installs 200 gigabytes in a couple of hours, like not having that ability to just fire up something. Um, yeah. yeah. There's definitely cases for physical media. Yeah. People yeah, absolutely. That. 100%. And uh, last question. Oh, good question, Baz. And last question, Dr. E3 Money writes, will there ever be disc-based, uh, even be disc-based consoles after this coming generation? Man, see now that, that is a question. That is a question. That is a good question because if we're up to Sony, if we're up to Xbox, I reckon they'd get rid of the fuck discs in a fucking heartbeat. Uh, I reckon they probably wanted to do it with this generation. I reckon they wish they could. Um, yeah. I think, again, it comes down to the things we just said, like the infrastructure. Yep. Like not everyone and, has that sort of stuff. Yeah. But uh, it's getting more common. Yeah, you know, the Australian government finished the NBN. I don't know if you noticed uh, over there in uh, in <laughs> San Fran, but uh, yeah, they finished it. It was a great success. Uh, Pat on back. You know, um, yeah, well done. Uh, it's it's already obsolete, but uh, <laughs> 100, 100 megabits a second is that what you're getting? It, it cost oh, four, four times four times what the better version was going to cost, and it's already obsolete. But uh, they finished it, so. Yeah. Um, oh, and not everyone actually has uh, the MBN. A lot of people are on satellite. But, uh, you know, they did finish. Uh, yeah, they, they attempted to lower expectations significantly. They still failed to meet those expectations, but they, uh, did. they did finish. They finished yeah. the race. So well done. Well done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, no, I, I think if they can get rid of them, they will. Uh, and yeah, I reckon that day is definitely coming. Uh, I think, I think we see a discless PlayStation six, unless, unless something like, unless AK takes off and they need a Blu-ray player for AK, in which case we'll get a ultra, ultra HD Blu-ray player in the Xbox. I don't know what the fuck they're going to call it. Xbox. 9000 and uh yeah we'll get one in that 9000 x but we won't get one in the playstation 6 because for whatever reason they all opt out of providing a way to play the video format they invented idiots mm. anyway uh although the ultra h there there is a there is a 4k blu-ray player in the playstation 5 there is yep mm. they, i guess that's a bonus for them like they're in the they're trying to sell that sort of stuff tvs and bigger tvs and 8k and that yeah. sort of thing so but like I, I know that like yeah in, in terms of disc disclessness uh, i know that movie studios are steering away from like dvds and stuff as well so hmm. you know that day is definitely coming yeah good question drew all right, that is the podcast. Um, if you'd like to leave questions, you can go to our Discord page, thegapodcast.com slash Discord, or you can email us the old-fashioned way, thegapodcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can find Ask the Gap on iTunes, Android, Windows Store, Spotify, YouTube, all the places you get your podcasts from. Uh, if you do have a moment, please rate and review the show. It helps other people find us. Um, you can find us on social media, facebook.com slash thegapodcast, twitter.com slash thegapodcast, we have a video show you can watch as well, thegapodcast.com slash YouTube, um, which is us on video. And occasionally, I chuck some video up there of games we're playing while we're talking. Um, so I might try and get... There was something you were talking about today that I wanted to chuck some video off of, but I don't think it'll work. Like Among Us? That kind yeah, of no, you, you need the yelling. Work, does it? Yeah. No. All right. Maybe we can. Maybe I'll just record. Maybe if I can get another game done, I'll just chuck some up on the Gap yeah. uh, channel. Provided everyone is comfortable. Or I could just put it on there the with the audio and have us talking yeah. over the top of it. Clash. That's yeah, genius. Chuck some <laughs> Surgeon Simulator too in. 
That'd be yeah. good to watch. All right, I'll uh, see if I've got some of that. But uh, you can find um, that yeah on our YouTube page. Also, you can go to our website, thegapodcast.com. It's got links to all the things we talked about on the show today, including past episodes. You want to go check some of those out, you can. And that is all thanks to our Patreon members who help support the show. Uh, and the website keeps things running. If you'd like to do that, you can go to patreon.com slash the GA podcast and become a member. You get the podcast like a day early, generally. Yeah. If there's yeah. no embargoes we, we're going with. Hmm. Um, so a tiny little reward, but for the support of people, thank you very much. We're yeah, very grateful. And Super anything grateful. you'd like to add on here? No, not this, uh, uh, it might be up by the time this is up. Head to Oz Gamers. I mean, head to Oz Gamers, like I was saying, check out Costa's uh, 3080 Founders Edition review. Uh, I think you'll have his third party reviews up by the time this is up. I'm not sure when the embargo is, is for that. Okay. So uh, I may have mentioned some stuff. We might have to go back. <laughs> There might be a weird cut at the start of this episode. Uh, I'm going to have to fucking look up an embargo. I may have actually said something I shouldn't have. Um, Has it got a wall? Yeah. It's fine. Uh, don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, and my my first couple of hardware reviews will be up there as well. Uh, what about you? You got anything? Uh, no, you can go to twitter.com slash Luke Laurie. L-A-W-R-I-E. And I'm at Joby Jojo. That is it this week. Um, Good stuff. We got next week, Serious Sam 4. Cool. Which uh, we talk about then. I think it's next week. Yeah, it is next week. We're fine. Nice. Well Um, done. So we we can talk about that. We'll talk about some uh, some more NBA, a couple of games. I want to check out, uh, I still want to check out Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Haven't had a chance to do that this week. I'm sure there's a bunch of other stuff that'll come out, uh, which we can talk about. Talk about how I installed a 3080 into my PC, right? 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 Right. <laughs> Wrong. Wrong. Yeah. We can talk about yeah. how I've been sitting here for three hours trying to get a fucking PlayStation and uh, we're still waiting for Amazon to put theirs up. Oh, no. So that's fun because oh, it's no. sold out like everywhere at this stage, which is insane. Hopefully people got theirs. Hopefully everyone uh, got an order. Let us know if you didn't get one and how frustrated yeah. you are. What's your plan? What are you going to do? What are we doing? Yep. yep. If you want to. Thanks for listening. Uh, Bye.